This is the Apostate Prophet. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Uh, today, we have gathered and come together um, to discuss some pressing uh, issues in the world, including a respectful and peaceful Muslim debater being attacked on stage by a violent, angry atheist debater. Is Islamophobe, total. Total Islamophobe. Islamophobe. Oh, oh, yeah. And, and, hey, hey, Pete, I have not I have not seen this. I have not seen this thing, but I have seen the clip already on a Muslim channel where the clip just starts off with uh, Matt Dillahunty charging across stage at, uh, at at poor Daniel, who's just sitting there uh, with a grin on his face. Uh, he's a totally nice guy. I, I don't know what's going on with you atheists, but you guys are out of control, man. Yes, we need to. We need to get there. Thing this, this is this is exactly what happens, AP. When you stop letting twelve-year-olds get married, it just goes right to that. That's the yeah. next step. Media. BAP. You don't let you don't let twelve-year-olds get married, and uh, next thing you know, you guys are charging across stage, uh, trying to start fights. So that's heck, that, heck. that's what happens. That's what happens. In fact, let's let, let's look at it right away. Like uh, David is talking about uh, this. So some Muslims shared these news of uh, atheist goes crazy during live debate. <laughs> Is that, is that, see, is that, I don't know if that's the one I saw, but it was all like that. <laughs> that's, the, that's the title of the of the video, but this is it. Is it, it starts like this. Look at, him, look at him walk. Look at him charging across there. Here, all right, guys. Charging across there like an angry. Look at this, James. James jump. James himself jumping up. The moderator himself jumping up. The whole mat back. Go ahead, gentlemen. Do it. All right, I'm so saying, just, look at this. I have an answer. Sit down. Sit down. Okay, sit down. You said sit that down. you could come over there and say it. Yeah. I'm not violent. I would never do anything. You can't violent. respond to any point. You just make I, a joke. See? Do you see? You see? The Muslim oh. is peacefully sitting there, and this atheist Islamophobe just starts going toward him. He charges. He wants to attack him. See, this is this, what, what's happening. This, this is, is what happens. The atheist goes crazy during life debate. This is what happens when you abandon Sharia and you give women rights. This is the next step. It goes right from giving women rights to atheists charging and trying to attack peaceful, innocent Muslims just sitting there, yeah. totally yeah, not doing let, anything to antagonize them. Yeah, you let women go to school, um, and <laughs> and the next thing you know, you've got atheists charging, uh, charging Muslims across the stage, uh, trying to trying to commit violence because of their uh, Islamophobia. And uh, yeah, this is making me rethink everything, man. I've been condemning uh, Islam for jihad all these years, and maybe atheists are the ones I should really be worried about. Also, what we are skipping here is uh, this is only the surface of things. Like while this atheist is here crazily attacking this peaceful Muslim because they sent women to school and they have you know liberalism. Uh, meanwhile, at home, the women are all doing OnlyFans and. Oh. They their children are all uh their kids are all the youth they are they are basically dying in public toilets doing drugs that's what happens and, and, and speaking of, of speaking of toilets i've heard from daniel that uh christians pee all over their walls in their bathrooms and that's why <laughs> that's why it makes sense that muhammad said you had to squat while peeing and uh so that's why everyone needs to pee like a girl in the super masculine macho religion that is true. That is true. Alhamdulillah. Now, all of that is complete nonsense, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. But as David just pointed out, this is what Muslims post. Uh, but for those who have seen the, the actual debate, the entire debate, which took place on modern day debate, a uh, modern day debate, James is actually here in the comment section right now. That's very, very nice. Uh, hello, James. 
uh, it's took trying, place he's there. Try, he's trying to he's trying to rescue this ru- live stream like he uh, had to rescue Daniel from Matt. <laughs> Save well, his life, probably. Who knows? We know what actually happened here. Uh, what actually happened is not that this atheist became crazy and started charging toward this Muslim. What happened is that it was the Muslim himself who actually issued a what you can call a threat. It is him is who true? actually initiated the 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 the, the implication of violence. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah, this will be the the build up to it. You want to have a look at it? So. Here's 300 the thing, that, here's the thing that Daniel doesn't seem to understand. So, so yeah, yeah, here's the thing. That whenever Daniel you get caught on the uh, inconsistency, you make a joke here's, or you blast the F word. Whenever you're caught out on an inconsistency, an inconsistency, you just blurt out the F word. Every you make time, a joke for your plant to laugh every at. Every time like I have a there. good point that he you, knows Whenever coming, you don't have an tries answer, to talk over you, me. Whenever you don't have an answer, you have to make a I dumb have an answer. If you shut the fuck up, I tell you. Oh, big man, come and say that right here. Come and say it right where? Here. I don't I'm not violent. Go ahead. Hey, James is quick, by the way. All right. Cool. Saying, just, I have an answer. Sit down. Let's, sit down. Okay. I'm, I'm you pretty sure James with those biceps could just like pick them both up never and you know. Yeah. 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 That's just why. Joke. Now I can't make sense. Do you do believe? Did you see the ridiculousness of this? It is. That's why James is all shredded because he has to. He has to keep the atheists and Muslims. <laughs> so it's it's on footage on camera daniel hikachu playing a tough guy and suggesting uh a violent resolution because uh he's he's angry at what matt just said matt coming over to him and being like so so what is going to happen if i come here and say it to you right here i'm uh-huh. not going to do anything and daniel suddenly backs down and starts uh you know Smiling, uh, uh, and like, uh, okay, I'm, a I'm a victim. I'm a victim. I wasn't gonna I'm say anything. I'm, I wasn't going to. Why don't you just sit down? Let's just, you know, talk. you know, if he what, wouldn't have gotten, we all up, just get along. If uh, Matt wouldn't have gotten up, they would have been. You'd see videos now all over going, yep. atheist cowers when Muslim challenges him. Mm-hmm. Like, we'd see all that right yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Matt, so yeah, all joking aside, Matt had to do that. He had to jump up and call call Daniel's bluff specifically because that, and that would be the new in thing. Look, everyone's scared. They're scared of our strength, our power. We look how strong <laughs> we are instead. And, but by calling that bluff, I have to say, Daniel looked like a little punk. I mean, yeah, you, yeah. It's, it's very clear when you say, say that to my face. What you're actually saying is, you're too scared to say that to my face because you know that there would be violent repercussions and you're too scared to come over and say that to my face. And he did it. And then Daniel do, oh, 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 what's going on here? I don't know. <laughs> let's just, let's sit down and talk. <laughs> hey, hey, is that still the Predator laptop? Does his laptop still say Predator yeah, on it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't I, even cover it. I up. thought maybe he would, hey. he would put a label on it or something. I don't know, or, or scratch it, but nothing. No. Hey, hey! Before before the next debate, someone should get a little, just a little sticker that says "sex," and then like sneak up right beforehand <laughs> when he looks the other way and put "sex" right above it. <laughs> but let's set something straight here. So um, these, um, you know, Muslim fans of Daniel Kikichu and others uh, want to post these videos out of context and 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 act like it is the the other one, the Islamophobe here, who is being um, who is being unreasonable and crazy and all of that. But what is happening here is pretty simple. If you are in a heated debate and uh, somebody says things to you that you are uncomfortable with, not for no reason, because if we watch the whole debate, we can see uh, Daniel attacking Matt personally over and over and over and over again, and Matt doing uh, the same thing, and also speaking with the F word, and and Matt actually doing it much less, and uh, rather attacking his disgusting views. Um, If you then sit there and you make the suggestion, you say, how about you come and say that right here? That is a direct initiation of a suggestion of violence. That means you can't handle what is being said right now. You are challenging your opponent to come here and say it right there because you don't like his words. Because if he if he comes here, then you may get violent. It is therefore Daniel Hikikichu here who is initiating the suggestion of violence. And Matt is not reacting to it with violence. He's going over there and calling out his bluff. And Daniel sits there like a little cat, like a little kitten, shy, <laughs> and asks him to just go back, sit back down, please. Go sit down. Let's not you do gotta, this. I will I will say, um, you know, I disagree with both of them throughout the whole debate. I, I watched the whole thing. 
I will say the one thing I, w- I would give advice to Matt on is you got you can't get emotional with Daniel because he will they will cut those clips they'll take them out of context that we're already seen him use it. You got to be stoic with them because Daniel likes to push your buttons as I've seen in multiple debates preparing for my debate with him. So that's why in my debate I try to remain as stoic as possible because it gives him nothing to play with. And you you, you see this in here he, he gives he gives the Muslims a lot to play with because Matt you know. Rightly so, gets emotional at the point at Daniel's position of saying it's okay for nine year olds to be married off and have sex with. I mean, yeah, that's it's hard to keep your cool when people are saying that, but that's what Daniel wants. He wants to say outrageous things to get you annoyed and emotional, and then he turns that and tries to use that against you, which sleazy tactic. But I mean, that's that's his that's what he does. Hey, uh, uh two, two things, two things, real quick. Um, one. <laughs> I just thought of this, but Christians should use this clip and title it Christian saves Muslim from atheists <laughs> <laughs> and have the labels on like Daniel Muslim and then Matt coming across stage atheist and then James and then like break into some song like and I will always love you like he saves the day and something. Um, yeah. So with that said, I mean, on the one hand, you can kind of understand daniel's perspective because he likes to play these debates on his channel and so on so uh he doesn't want cursing and so on and that could be a thing that if you want a rule about language you should discuss that before the debate and say here here's a here are the rules we're going to follow during the debate uh so Mm -hmm. anyway i can kind of get uh daniel you know not not wanting matt to say certain things but i mean at the same time uh if you want people to be nice, you should be playing nice and not do not constantly doing things to enrage people. But I mean, think about the moral, the moral compass of Daniel. Um, sex with little kids, good. F word, really bad. <laughs> yeah, right. That sex is the thing. Little, right? Sex with little kids, wife beating, enslaving people, uh, murdering apostates, all that good. Where does he draw the line? F word. That's what that's that's too much. You know, go going around here, you know, beating your 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 six year old child bride into submission and so on. That's fine. F word? No, that that's too much for my perfectly functioning moral compass. It, it's not hey. just that. It's like uh, your opponents should be executed, should be killed. People mm-hmm. who leave hey. Islam should be killed. Uh, people should be fought and enslaved. But hey, why is he allowed to say the F word? <laughs> that. That is one question. If I would have more time in the cross examination in my debate with Daniel, I was going to ask him about that whole wife beating thing. Like, so if a man has got a six year old child bride, could he hit her if she is refusing him sex? Like, for weeks, you know, they've been married, she's hiding from, could he start hitting her? Like, I didn't get a chance to because we ran out of time, but that was. That was on my list. And yeah, I, I just, just so you know, the, just so you know, the correct answer is yes. Yeah, I, yeah, from him, yeah, for sure. I, we know it is. I mean, Oh, I was talking about Islamically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is this, man? The guy is eating here on the live stream. Very rude. Amateur. Yeah, amateur. You're muted, David. You, you just muted yourself. Now you're yourself. muted. Yeah, amateur. There amateur. You go. Just, go back I muted myself because I'm crunching on crackers here. <laughs> hey! Hey, AP, who are you calling a cracker? What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> Uh, or I'll, I'll put my I'll put my crackers away. I wanted energy oh. to be awesome for this for this show, but I'll just be all weak and lethargic instead. What all right. is that's all right? I got a big thing. What'd you do? Black, black what coffee. Is, what did I just? Well, we gotta oh. um, we do eventually got to go to the two thirty two hours and thirty minute mark because I come up in this debate uh, unexpectedly. Well, I get I should have expected it. I mean, <laughs> when uh when I debated Daniel. In uh, in April, I believe it was. Matt comes in the room while we're, we're watching like the earlier debates, and he comes over to me and goes, "Hey, am I right in assuming that after my debate, the rest of this conference is about whether or not we can children or not?" Because <laughs> I, like, I was going Thank against God. Daniel, and then after me was Dizzle here debating Kenny Boomer on the age of Aisha. Oh, I, I can't. Sorry, sorry. You mean Kenny Boomer, not Boomer, right? Boomer, yeah, whatever. I forget how to pronounce his last yeah, name. Okay, okay, boomer. Respond to any so you do you believe in schooling up. rape? So you believe in? Okay. Would you? Do you want an educational rape? Wanna... Look at look at Daniel's face after he got completely worked up because uh, he was just because he just came walking. Do you can't about respond. Hey, what's funny is uh, the 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 PowerPoint behind him says Islam is balanced. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> can't respond to any so questions. So you do you believe in schooling off. rape. So do you believe in... This is, would you, you this, this, this is a face. common tactic from Daniel, is that he will just do, like, police... Like movie police scene interrogator were like, you believe this? Why would you believe that? Answer me on this. Answer me. And like he tried to do it in my debate with him, and I had to keep pointing out. He kept interrupting me, but he tries to do like this long a, drawn out interrogator thing where he asks the same thing over and over again, or says the same thing over and over again. Do you have a timestamp of? Uh, I forgot to note that, but there was this one part where he, where Daniel pressed him on answering a question with yes or no, which was uh, on whether he is for. Uh, whether he wants to allow or or, or punish nine year olds, uh, you know, having sex with each other or having relationships or not. And yeah, was, I think it's yes or no. Let me um, let me find. I think I know where it is, uh, but uh, I think was... it's right before this point. Actually, actually, let, let's just let's just go by uh, by your 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 plan. I think you made a you made a much better plan here with your time. Well, it, it can't so. be any worse than your plan, which is just randomly. That is true. That is Jumping true. around. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking uh, IP should make a should make a podcast, uh, a daily podcast named IP Every Day or something. IP like Daily. Yeah, <laughs> IP Daily or IP. I thought that would be a brilliant thing, right? <laughs> Yo, it's um. If you go to like two thirty, uh, uh, they talk yeah. about me, and then right after is the yes or no thing you were just talking about. So okay. it's like two thirty, then like the yes or no thing presented nowhere. To I say that oh yeah four year olds go through puberty and oh, oh, oh yeah go go back a little bit because yeah okay. this is where oh. he starts to lie because he definitely oh, uh, whoa, whoa 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 Daniel can't lie he's one of the terrorists. few that's oh. Daniel doesn't lie. They don't lie very convenient for you but the people who are being killed by these groups did consider them to be terrorists the the regimes that were displaced by these groups did consider them to be terrorists but the winners are able to write history. Um, you keep bringing up like uh, this point about four year olds. This is like a straw man that was put forth in a previous debate. <laughs> Nowhere did I yep. say that a four year old should be, you know, in a sexual relationship. It was a hypothetical yeah, yeah. presented okay, uh, to me. And I answered that on the basis of the hypothetical that was presented. Nowhere did I say that, oh, yeah, four year olds go through puberty and therefore they are uh, they should be sexually active. So you're so saying that's. A hypothetical four-year-old who went through the security would be okay. That's what you said in the debate. So we can we can go through right. what I said hey, in that debate. Hey, hold it. Hey, hold it up. Hold up. Like, okay, let me be clear. Hypothetically, if there were a hypothetical four-year-old that hypothetically reached precocious puberty, yes, I would hypothetically marry and bone that that four-year-old. That's all I'm saying. But so uh, that's what I'm saying. This is a this is a straw man. I'm not saying about anything actual. I'm not saying anything in the real world. I'm just saying, yeah, hypothetically, four-year-old, eh, totally open, open game there. Well, this, this is crazy, man. So ridiculous. Um, I, I am going to play IP. Uh, let me know whenever you want to pause and add something. I'm also going to play the clip uh, well, just to show people what exactly happened. Yeah, let, let's um, let's just keep playing a little bit of this. But yeah, he's what Daniel's trying to do is he, he in my debate with him, I, I proposed this hypothetical that if a four year old went through precocious puberty, because he said if a girl is showing any signs of puberty, they can be married off and the marriage can be consummated. So okay, four year old goes through pre precocious puberty, and he said if there are signs, then mm -hmm. yes. So he did say that you can't yeah, sleep with did. four year olds in Islam. He yeah. is now trying to back walk. He's trying to walk back on this. And I'm, I'm surprised because I thought he was the honest Muslim apologist. Mm -hmm. Here he is walking back on what he said. Well, look, look at look at how he just defended himself, because uh, that was a that's a little <laughs> diabolical there. Look what he actually said. He's actually correct. I did not say that a four year old <laughs> should be sexually active. I responded to a hypothetical situation. So, yeah, he's correct. It doesn't mean he didn't say, yes, if a girl gets puberty, you know, precocious puberty at four, then she should start having sex or she should be married off and so on. Mm -hmm. Because he did include that no, it requires things like parental consent and, and so oh, on. Hold on, hold on, dude. It's, but it gets worse. Uh, you, you would you would think that, but uh, he is going to now clarify yep. what he supposedly actually said, and he will completely deny what he what he said. Yep. So it, really? it is getting much oh, worse. Yeah. yeah let's okay. So yeah, just based on what he just said, I was like, yes, he's technically correct if he wanted to say it, even though he was obviously defending marriage to and sex with uh, four year olds because. That's what the Quran does. Yeah, but, but, it's, but it's, it's getting much worse. Look at this now. 
but I thought you want to stick on the topic of the. Dinner. Well, I'm just saying you're you're now denying that you said what we all heard you say, which no, got I popularized said, over the internet because Mike specifically asked if a four year old goes through precocious puberty, under your version of what Allah permits, is it permissible to marry and have sex with her? And your answer was yes. No, the the point that I put to that person in that debate was that if we accept that someone is going through puberty, that means that the person is going to desire sexual relations. They're going to desire to be sexually active. And that is a biological fact. It just doesn't happen at four years old. It happens at nine, 10, 11, 12 years old. And that's why when we look at American culture and Western culture, oh, yeah, pause it real fast. Pause it before he completely we, before denied he jumps, what he actually said. Yeah. He's about to change subject here, but yeah, he's completely complete denied. Lie. He's, he, the way he worded it is, is, is not what happened in the debate. The way he worded it here was that if I was saying in some other world, if people started going through puberty at four, would it be okay to marry and have sex with them? But that's not what I said. I gave real life things that have happened mm -hmm. in our world. We're four-year-olds, five-year-olds, 11-month-year-old at one point went through precocious puberty. And in the real world, if that happened in Islam, would it be morally permissible for that girl to be married off by her parents and then the pedophile husband starts raping her because that's what it would be. And he said, yes, that would be perfectly morally, that would be morally permissible in Islam. Now he's walking back on that, which is very odd considering he's kind of built up his reputation for being honest about what Islam teaches. But look, wow. at, I mean, look, look at even what he said, he, even in his dialed back version that he's presenting now, he's like, oh, I'm simply saying that once a child goes through puberty, that child is going to be desiring sex. And that's just a biological fact. And so you got to do something with that and marriage would be the outcome. So if if an 11 month old baby gets precocious puberty, that 11 month old is going to start getting really horny and, and looking around, oh, I, I need someone here. Uh, what am I going to do? Oh, and the parents will be like, oh, we got to do something. So we'll uh, we'll marry our 11 month old baby off to uh, Daniel Hakikachu here. Oh. Uh, let's, let's look at what he actually said. Um, and then I want to play again his, his response to Matt. L let's look at what he really said in this clip. He's just behind oh, yeah. the Predator laptop for anyone wondering. Yeah. He's yeah. just behind the Predator laptop. <laughs> Too perfect, man. Yeah. Signs of physical keep, maturity. Keep in mind, he bought that at some point, right? He decided yes. to buy that at some point. <laughs> like, he's like, all the laptops out there, hey, this has an Apple logo. I don't like apples. Ooh, this one has a Predator logo on it. Yeah, that's, that's all me. That's me, yeah. <laughs> it was permissible for the husband in Islamic law to have marital relationships or consummate the relation with consummate. his bride. And this is the example of the prophet, peace be upon him. Do you know well, what precocious puberty is? Starting puberty unusually early. Like, Is there anything in Islam that prevents you from you know, a man marrying a five-year-old that started precocious puberty? You can arrange a marriage even as an infant, but that doesn't mean that sex is allowed. Could a man have a marriage to a five-year-old consummate it if she started precocious Consummate puberty? it. She starts showing signs of physical maturity then yes, that's permissible. As I said, age four. He, he specifically it's asked about concept. So this is something that becomes biologically impossible because for I have there are no, it goes as early as 11 months. Well, that's something that the parents would not, uh, the, see the thing about Islamic marriage is that parents are involved at these ages. And when you look at the marriage of- So you just heard it. Um, Mike asked him specifically about, uh, what was it? Four years old, five years old, four years old. He said, Three. yes, he said, yes, if there are signs of puberty, then it is, yes, appropriate and allowable for that child to get married and also to consummate the marriage. So to have sex for, so for, for a man to, for example, have sex with a four year old girl. That is specifically what is being said here. If there are signs of early puberty, uh, Mike pushes uh, and goes to the age of three. Daniel claims that it is uh, biologically not possible. Mike uh, refutes it and says it goes as early as eleven months. And then he brings in the other standards of uh, you know the parents being in charge and them probably not allowing it and so on. But what he clearly says here, we have heard it all, is that if there are signs of early maturity at the age of four, then yes. The marriage can be consummated. Sex can be had. But we, if we go over to the discussion with Matt Dillahunty, he completely denies that. Now let's play it again. This is a clear, blatant lie. Unbelievable. Saying you're you're now denying that you said what we all heard you say, which no, got popularized said, over the internet because 
Mike specifically asked, if a four-year-old goes through precocious puberty, under your version of what Allah permits, is it permissible to marry and have sex with her? And your answer was yes. No, the, the point that I put to that person in that debate was that if we accept that someone is going through puberty, that means that the person is going to desire sexual relations. They're going to desire to be sexually active. And that is a biological fact. It just doesn't happen at four years old. It happens at nine, 10, 11, 12 years old. And that's why when we look at American. So, uh, so no, it's, you were, it's, no, you it's were very specifically clear, right? asked. He, you, yeah, he was specifically asked about marrying and consummating marriage with a five year old, with a four year old. He agreed, indeed, indeed, if she shows signs of maturity, then you can have sex with her, uh, marry her and have sex with her. And then his only response to the 11 month old, because that was uh, something apparently new to him, was, uh, yeah, but you'd have to get par parental consent. And no parent would consent unless we've conditioned the parent to think that it's best. Um, but hey, I did want to point out one additional thing for everyone who's watching and anyone who's new to this. As revolting as Daniel's <laughs> position is, as horrifying as it is, as you look at this and go, oh my goodness, what? That's the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. He is still massively more moral <laughs> than his God and his prophet who allow there, there's no requirement of puberty. In, in Islam, right? Those There are schools of thought who have suggested that later on, but Aisha had not reached puberty, according to the Hadith, and Surah 65, verse 4 of the Quran does not require puberty. It specifically refers to marrying and having sex with girls before, no, marrying, having sex with, divorcing, and passing on to another man, girls, all before they've reached the age of puberty. According to the Quran, and according to the commentaries, you can, a Muslim man can marry a five-year-old, a six-year-old, whatever, have sex with her, get bored with her, divorce her, pass her on to another guy who can marry her, have sex with her, divorce her, uh, pass her on to the next guy. This can all happen before a girl has ever even reached puberty. So as revolting as Daniel is, he is, <laughs> he is a light. <laughs> he is a light. My, uh... he, he is a beacon of morality within Islam. <laughs> My, one of my favorite things is Daniel will not even name me. Like he, like Matt is going, Mike, Mike Jones, Mike this, Mike that, and Matt and and Daniel are going, yeah, that that person I was having a debate with. The man, that that Christian who shall not be named, yeah, <laughs> that man. I just I find it. I I just want to stay on uh, the fact that we have a very clear, very clear, mm -hmm. undeniable, blatant lie on display here, yep. and. I I just can't get over such things by just saying, oh, look, you see, he lied. Anyway, because I mean, this is a guy who is respected by so many Islamists as a fantastic debater who crushes his opponents and all of that. Uh, and we know that he's a liar. We know that he is a, a horrible person. We know that he says horrible things. But here we have a very clear uh, you know, presentation, a very clear display of him lying precisely lying without any excuse about what he said before and th there is no way he doesn't remember what he actually said there is no way he suddenly changed his mind on this whole stuff completely and he was like oh i wouldn't have never said that because i don't believe that no he was clearly asked by mike and he answered and now he's denying to have ever said that and he's making up a different story mm -hmm. daniel why in the world are you lying Dear audience, dear fans of, of Daniel Kikichu, why is your guy lying here and how in the world does he get away with this? And, uh, those questions I, I wrote were, were worded specifically. I like wrote those out in like March before the debate. Like, all right, how can I make sure? Like, I don't want to say, can a man have sex with a, with a four-year-old? Because they'll be like, no. But so I worded it specifically, can a man marry and consummate the marriage with a girl who's gone through precocious puberty? Because that's that's what he has to say yes to. And he, he did. He walked right into it and said it. Uh, and also his argument here in this debate is a little weird because he's saying like, well, if a 9, 10 or 11 year old's going through puberty, they're going to want to desire sex. Therefore, they should be married. Well, by that logic, if your only argument as to why you should allow child marriage, well, at least in this this instance, the argument is. 
is because they desire sex. What about what about homosexuals at this point? They desire to have homosexual relationships. Is that evidence that they should be we should allow homosexual marriage? Or is the desire only permissible when it conform when it fits with his Islamic views? It's like you just can't argue from desire. That's a bad argument. Liar! Yeah. You're a liar. You're a liar. Sorry, I had to play that sound. Yeah. Um, yeah, and by the way, that that liar uh, thing is is very important because. Uh, especially in early conversations I have with people, I'm more interested in find a, finding out. I mean, sometimes I'll, sometimes I'll go through the entire first conversation with someone trying to figure out, does this person, is this person sincere in what they're saying, but wrong? Or is this person knowingly lying? Um, and we've caught Daniel lots of times by now saying something like, like citing studies that he, that are being completely misrepresented. And even there, the question is, does he know he's misrepresenting them or is he just really, really bad at understanding the sources he's citing? Because it's there's a, there's a huge difference there in how you're going to interact with somebody. If someone is bad at understanding and interpreting sources uh, versus someone just flat out lies about the sources, those are two different kinds of people there. Uh, the same thing with Daniel saying that, um, that according to the Catholic Encyclopedia, Mary was 12 years old. Uh, okay, you're either the wor you had either had the worst reading comprehension in the world, but somehow, somehow you're just really bad at reading, and so you interpreted it as saying that, or you're just lying about it, like uh, like like the Dawa the Dawa guys always do. So I mean, I'm yeah. always interested in that. But here, by this point, it's pretty clear this guy just lies. So yeah. we are not dealing with. He's he's more honest about some of the things Islam teaches than a lot of the other Dawa guys who try to cover it up. But make no mistake about it, Dawa is deception, and he is That's another Dawa liar. Real problems. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, somebody said in the chat, Mike, you should change your 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 name here to that person. Uh, that yeah, Mike, that person. Yeah. Oh, you know what? You know what? Have been funny <laughs> if uh, if Matt had called him out for not using your name. And then Matt was like, Mike Jones. And Daniel was like, who? He goes, Mike Jones. He goes, who? Mike Jones. Who? AP, you don't even know what we're talking about. It's Matt. a fantastic, fantastic scenario, of course. We're talking about rap. We're talking about. Yeah. I'll change yeah. my tag to he who should not be named. It's, it reminds me of it reminds me of Monica Lewinsky, though. It's like uh, that I did not have sexual relations with that person instead of that woman. Uh, well, that all depends on what your definition of is. <laughs> that was classic. That was brilliant. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I don't know why we have to go there now. It's a complete perversion. David, of course, that's what he goes to. Culture and Western culture, the children at that age are highly sexually active. That's the reality in the world today. So Wait, at what age are they sexually active? 11 he months, says. CP. 11 months. <laughs> <laughs> he he says at, nine. Wait. American culture and Western wait, wait, wait. sexually act the person is going to desire sexual relations. For, They're going to desire to be sexually active. And that is a biological fact. It just doesn't happen at four years old. It happens at nine, 10, 11, 12 years old. And that's why when we look at American culture and Western <laughs> culture, the children at that age are highly sexually active. That's the reality in the world today. So you, or I won't say you, because I don't know what your views are. That's true. Like, lots of nine-year-olds everywhere. They, they keep going around and Ugh. having sex you with know, each other, like orgies you know, and stuff. It's, it's terrible. My, my daughter's eight and like, it could, like, what is he talking about? This is just utter nonsense. Like, there are there are other families in the church I attend with nine, 10, 11, 12 year olds. None of them act like this. And none of, no one is struggling with this issue. So what is he, he's just making up nonsense. Like this is just not a reality. It sounds like Daniel has never, Daniel never, never leaves the house. He doesn't interact with, uh, with, with society, with other human beings. I mean, he lives in America, right? It's, it's not just some guy commenting on America from, uh, across the world. I mean, he lives in America, uh, but apparently he has, he never interacts with other humans, so he doesn't know what actually happens, but this is just what he, what he thinks because. Well, yeah, I mean, he thinks that. <laughs> <laughs> like Christians outside, pee all over our don't walls. leave the door. Don't, leave, <laughs> don't go outside the house. I, Christians pee I, all over the street. I know what's going world. on outside these doors. <laughs> Christians are peeing all over everything, and there are a bunch of like seven-year-olds running around boning each other because they've gone to puberty. They're all so oh, Everyone, stay inside. Stay inside. That's lock what's going your doors. On out there. Lock your doors. Don't go out. Outside, Christians are peeing on the streets. <laughs> <laughs> they're running down the streets peeing. <laughs> 
but the person that I was debating has no problem. The that person. person. <laughs> you shall not be named. <laughs> in there being, you know, this laissez faire attitude towards uh, children 9, 10, Wait, 11, he or. Didn't, he even didn't even give your gender. He said they're saying. <laughs> Like you're plural, like you're plural. Well, he's, it, giving, it's very, he's giving you pronouns now. It's very <laughs> progressive. It's very progressive and woke of Daniel to not assume my gender. Woke so at least he's woke. being more respectable about pronouns. Maybe he now is all for the woke agenda and wants to respect pronouns, I guess. Like, yeah, Daniel goes full woke. Pronouns. Daniel goes full woke, adopts uh, adopts uh, pronouns for his opponents. Yeah. Yeah. Being active wow. with sexual uh, dating, uh going to prom going to these so is this true uh, michael uh what he just said Go back. Uh, children and you because i don't know what your views are but the person that i was debating has no problem in there being you know this laissez-faire attitude towards uh children 9 10 11 or even younger being active with sexual uh dating uh, going to prom, going to these kind of 11 year olds are prom, boyfriend, girlfriend, fornicating that is all allowed. So, you don't have a so, so it, who shows up, to, who shows up to prom with an 11 year old? I've never, never heard of that before. <laughs> is, is this is this true, Michael? So, Wait, uh, this is like is, this is going everything is going back to like Daniel's fantasy about what's going on outside the walls yeah. of his room. It's like, oh, so there's all these, there's all these nine year olds graduating high school and going to prom and promoting <laughs> younger. each other. That's why we and have to marry them all. Yeah. He said, and younger, so and like, younger, yeah, seven year olds going to prom and having orgies there or something like that. Is, that's, that's what he's imagining. So, what in the world do, do, do you are you are you in favor of letting people uh just do these things and are you in favor of people just going around and having having sex at the age of nine or younger with each other and all of that is this true michael well and, you might be surprised to hear but no i am not in favor of any of this and this is just as, a you, bold said, face lie. as you said in your debate with him you just you're just saying you don't think they, they should be uh they should be uh punished for all this stuff as far as like sending yeah, them to the, jail, prison and stuff and he does the same thing in this debate with Matt because Matt, this comes up right after this, where Matt is like, I don't think we should make laws against nine-year-olds having sex. But Matt clarifies and says, but I don't think nine-year-olds should be having sex. But Daniel's logic is you either want nine-year-olds thrown in prison to prevent them from having sex, or you want them. It's this utter false dichotomy yeah, that he that's, always he is, the, out. he is the absolute king of the false of the false yeah. dichotomy. If, it's it's uh, it's you either you, you either want you either want the leftist dystopia or the Sharia dystopia. There are no other options. Those are the only two options. Pick one dystopia and you can't say no I don't I don't want either dystopia. I don't want either of those dystopias. No, it's one or the other. Pick one. Yeah and it's like if you don't want child marriage and nine-year-olds being thrown in prison, then you will, then you're going to go on the slippery slope, which is a fallacy. And you're going to be in favor of everything else on the far left. And that's just his, that's the same. He does the same thing to Matt. It's the same stupid logical fallacy that we've seen before from him. And that's why he's accusing me of this because in his mind, because I reject child marriage and I don't think nine-year-olds should be thrown in prison for having sex or engaging in any sexual activity because they can't consent. They don't know what they're doing because I don't think they should be thrown in prison for that. Therefore, what? I'm in favor of it happening. And so that's where his reasoning is coming from in this. It's, it's, this it's is so a, ridiculous. This is a very typically uh, you know, legalistic Islamic uh, way of looking at things where um, – if you are against something, then that means you have to punish it, and you have to punish it severely, and you have to lock him up. If you if you if you don't do that, then that means you're not against it. And what what has gotten into you? You're supposed to be against it. You're supposed to lock him up. You're supposed to put him in jail. You're supposed to torture them. If you are if if you're not doing that, then that means you are okay with it. And indeed, you yourself would engage in it, and you would promote it. That's what he is doing the whole time, and this is a very yeah, common thing that that many other Muslim apologists will also do. And it is, it is, they don't seem to understand that that is not how reality works. You may, you, you probably don't want little kids to go and start doing all kinds of weird things with each other. That does not mean that you believe the state should step in and pick them up and put them in prison. There are well, different yeah, means of doing that, right? It's like, what sort of authoritarian dystopia does Daniel want to create in the world? Like, I've always said a lot of Muslim apologists want to drag us back to the ethics of the seventh century and leave us there. I mean, it, it's ridiculous. I like, look, I may not be, I don't want adultery to happen. I don't think people should be 
you know, cheating on their spouse. But are we going to make laws that anyone who commits adultery is thrown in prison? I mean, think of the dystopian nightmare of that. I mean, the prisons are already overflowing with people. We're just going to start throwing everyone in prison now for committing adultery. Some things the law just cannot handle. This is why we separate politics and ethics. There's overlap, obviously, but politics, the, the law cannot cover all of morality. We can't punish someone from the law every time they tell a white lie, for example, even though lying is immoral. Like you get like the fact that he doesn't understand the difference between ethics and politics just says a lot about the dystopian nightmare that he would want to unleash upon the world if he actually had any power. I'm just imagining uh, some some guy masturbating at home, and then uh, immediately the po <laughs> oh, <laughs> the police comes and kicks in the door. <laughs> we turned on your iPhone camera. And we saw what you were doing. We have come. Six months in prison. Chop off his hand. <laughs> you can never do that again. <laughs> so many like 13 year olds walking around without hands. Trying to out, How do I do it with the other hand? Because they chopped off his hand. What are we going to do? And then some, some guys like, listen, I got really good with yoga. They took both my hands, but you use your feet, you know. Like. <laughs> Problem or people who are scoffing and laughing, they don't have a problem with nine year olds having sex. They just have a problem with the idea of a nine year old getting married. That was the point of that debate, and we don't have to rehash it. Well, I think, Mike Jones, if you're watching, I think Daniel Ooh. just suggested that you're okay with who? Nine-year-olds engaging in sexual activity, and I want to verify that because if that is Are true, you? if that's true, Mike, you're as repugnant as Daniel is. But uh, Mike, shame on you. Shame on you. Let's hear this again. Daniel just suggested that you're okay with nine-year-olds engaging in sexual activity, and I want to verify that because if that is Are true, you? if that's true, Mike, you're as repugnant as Daniel is, but I don't think that's true. So do you think we shame on you, Mike? He started shame speaking on. to you directly in the middle of a debate. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I was drunk. Just like Muslims. Just like Muslims speak directly to Muhammad who were during the prayer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, was, uh, eating. I was yeah. driving to the airport at that point on my way back to, back home. And that like I like had to stop the car and go, wait, wait, did they, they just talk to me directly? <laughs> so I, I, put, I put a tweet out going, well, to answer your question, Matt, answer your question, Matt. No, I don't think nine years should be having sex. You know, you know, it'd have been funny if you were like uh, in the area and you like ran over there real quick and like they're talking all of a sudden you pop up. Ah, hey, just so you all know, uh, you can answer their question live. That'd He's awesome. a liar. Um, what, what counts as dating? What if a nine year old wants to have sex with another nine year old boy? Is do you have do we have laws? Should we have laws that prevent this, that? This isn't about. Should we? Oh, now it's not about. Now it's not about nine-year-olds. Okay. I'm sorry. Do I get to answer your question? Yes, or please are you, answer. Are you, gonna are, you in favor, an answer? are you in favor of laws that would ban a nine-year-old girl from sleeping with a nine-year-old boy? Yes or no? We don't have yes laws. Yes or no? <laughs> okay. How can you possibly <laughs> argue with, some, with a person like that? <laughs> okay. One more time since you're going to do the yes or no thing. Like One more time with the question. Am I in favor of laws that would ban that? No. So you don't have a problem with nine-year-olds having sex. That's notice, a, notice, I, notice. If you don't want, if you if you don't say there's a law, you have no you have no problem with it. If you don't if you don't believe that you know tossing them in prison or something like that is should be you know should be part of the law, then you you if, you think it's okay and it's totally fine. If you don't think that thirteen-year-old boys should have their hand chopped off for masturbating, you you are in favor of them transitioning and having orgies every week. I uh -huh. mean, like, how could you, Matt? Uh -huh. I mean, obviously, you, you want them. It's basically you either chop their hands off or you're supporting OnlyFans. <laughs> Did I? I feel like I don't know, but there there is. Um, I don't think Daniel Kikachu is that stupid. I don't. I don't think that he is. This. Uh, I don't know. He's, stupid. he's pretty consistent. He's pretty consistently. He's pretty. He's extremely consistent with the the uh, the black and white thinking. So he's consistent with that. He's he's extremely consistent with the slippery slope fallacy. Mm -hmm. He's he's the all time king of what about is him. So if anyone actually thinks like this, it would be Daniel. Like I mean, his brain just seems wired. Okay, here, here's the thing. I want to ask you. I want to ask you a question. Uh, both of you a question. Maybe the audience too. Um, if somebody does this over and over again and still doesn't understand it, and being and a, being answered by by Mike during the debate, and even by by Matt now, uh, still doesn't understand. Uh, the, the difference here and still insists oh so you're not you're not for punishing them that means you're for it 
that would strike me as a rather stupid person, somebody who doesn't, who can't think, who can't, who can't understand well, a little bit of I nuance mean, here. And I want to ask you guys, uh, because I have my view on this, do you guys believe that Daniel Kikichu is actually that stupid? I believe he is that illogical. You could be smart in certain ways and uh -huh. still still very illogical in in certain ways and so i, I mean, think that's him your, your brain i mean your brain can be turbocharged in certain areas and you could be extremely extremely bad with other issues like like you could be like a literary genius and terrible at math well you could uh you know be smart enough to uh, assemble a bunch of sources and and have lots of debates and so on and nevertheless you're you're just, i mean it seems like he's just wired for this black and white thing, it's this or this. It's, it's the only the only possibilities. It's uh, I don't know. I think I think he. In other words, I think he is like that. Well, I would I would say I don't think he's very equipped well in philosophy. I mean, like when I when I got my master's in philosophy, we spent time. Classes were basically off in group discussions, and you go back and forth, and you're they're trying to teach you how to think philosophically, and you learn like how people talk in the real world and you start picking out logical fallacies so when i watch these debates i'm often like yeah black and white fallacy yeah that's a slippery slope up oh, that's an ad hominem you know that's what i sort of do in these debates now when, I, when i'm listening in and just daniel just seems like he doesn't really know a lot about philosophy how to think philosophically um or another possibility is is he's doing these extreme things to push people's buttons because that's what he wants to do like if you're not if you are against nine-year-olds being punished for being sexually active then you must be in favor of it and he might be doing that on purpose just to push buttons so he's either being intentionally sleazy in how he does this or he's just not very he's not philosophically minded and he does poor philosophical training honestly and by by the way notice the uh notice the hypocrisy here um daniel when he's defending wife beating when he defends wife beating He's like, okay, if your wife gets out of line or is doing something wrong, uh, who would be better? Who would you want to punish her? Would you want the state to punish her or would you want her husband who loves her to punish her? Therefore, it's better for the husband to be doing the punishing because it's not some you know distant entity, uncaring entity or something like that. He's someone who actually cares about her. So notice, applying that exact same logic to this situation, if, a, if your nine-year-old started having sex with another nine-year-old or something like that, it would seem like you would want the parents dealing with that situation and taking mm -hmm. steps to deal with the situation rather than sending the kid to the government to be punished by the the, the uh, criminal justice system. But And yet he's saying, hey, if you don't want the criminal... Th think about this. He's saying, if you don't want the criminal justice system taking over and doing it, then there are no more rules. It's anarchy. And yeah, yet he, him he himself believes in, in, in beating your wife and not ha not ha not uh, having her uh, judged by the government. So wait a minute, what happened? What happened to a husband loves his wife more than the government does, and therefore the husband should be the one disciplining his wife? Why wouldn't that exact same reasoning say, okay, if your child is having you know has started having sex at a young age, you should be dealing with that and figuring out how you're going to handle that, and not the the government, which doesn't actually care. But the government does. The government does step in if it's like. If it's like a 20 year old having sex with a nine year old, then okay, now we got to deal with this with this guy. But they're not going to punish, they're not going to. Oh, he froze. Oh, no. Oh, he lost died. him. But yeah, yeah just to dead. carry on what he's saying. He's right. Daniel's being inconsistent here. He wants yeah. the state to punish children for having sex, but he wants a husband to punish the wife because he doesn't want the state involved because he thinks it's bad. So he'll just use whatever argument he can in the debate to try to score points. But that's. That's typical Daniel Kikachu. He's just trying to score points in this, but he'll use these inconsistent arguments. And, you know, I, I've seen it on, on my debate prep with him. And so, you know, I've always wanted to ask him, does he think a wife should be able to punish her husband if he's acting out of line? Like, like, what, what would he say to that? Like, why how, does how the dare husband you? punish? Like, how dare you suggest that? Well, I mean, they're supposed to be equal. I thought that was a basic human right of equality. I don't know. That's so so weird of me to think. But... There is no such thing. There is no such thing in Islam. Uh, yeah. it is what well, the Quran makes it very clear that that a uh, husband, husband and wife have rights over each other, but uh, but the husband is above the the wife, the woman, the <laughs> that wife. Sounds, that sounds like Orwell. Everyone's yeah. equal, but some are more equal than others. Yes, yeah, some animals are more equal than others. Uh, but it, it, it's like. Um, 
and it specifies that that men are in charge of the women and uh if 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 women become too arrogant or if they fear arrogance they fear arrogance from the women then they may beat the women and that is that is the bad thing right and it's you know honestly i think you know when I, i've said this before but daniel's argument is really stupid because if you've got a domestic dispute you should want someone who's not emotionally involved to settle it why does the husband who's emotionally involved get to make the decisions it should be that you know you have an outside person like a judge come in and go okay what's the conflict here what did she say what did he say who hit who first kind of thing because what's going that's on typically here? what yeah that's typically what happens when there's two people fighting someone steps in who's a neutral party and goes all right stop it but in daniel's world the dystopian nightmare he'd want to thrust upon us men would be able to just take charge and do whatever the hell they want and you'd have you know a high increase of spousal abuse and these emotionally charged husbands acting on emotion it'd be horrible yeah D uh, david just told me that he has internet problems uh, uh he said uh internet has been having problems today have to restart mode and we'll be back soon okay oh. uh you now we have to we have to wait for for david to come back david's gonna come back soon yeah yeah this is he's gonna leave me in this room with his atheist the guy might charge me i've seen it happen on camera before yeah they you might just you can't trust reach through the camera atheism is terrorism yeah uh <laughs> that's why that's why every every week you know they do that jihad report and they yeah. cover all the atheists around the world <laughs> count book i just became a member of the channel welcome to the channel welcome to the membership welcome to being uh one of the followers of the final messenger the final prophet oh i i saw you Oh, now you, you changed it earlier. I, I was the other, the other final, final messenger, and then yeah. I now he who should not be named. <laughs> okay, okay. So, um, we'll just go on without David for a little bit. If he's restarting his modem, then that might take um, a while maybe five to ten minutes or something. So, unfortunately, yeah, we have to forget about David now and move on without him. And that, no. So you don't have a problem with nine-year-olds having sex? That's a lie, and you are the most dishonest person I've ever engaged with. You just forced me to answer yes or no to a question about whether or not I would advocate for a law, and then when I said that I would not advocate for the law, you suggested I don't have a problem with it. I have massive problems with it. You're the one that doesn't have a problem apparently, with it, apparently which is not why enough this to is suggest the legislation. debate we are ever going to do, and I don't care if you lie about my views. Don't fuck kids! So, so Tell the people in this. <laughs> Pretty clear. Do you want to say anything about this? Oh my! It's 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 the fault. If you don't want a law against children having sex, you're in favor. Like what sort of nonsense? Like again, I I, I agree, with David. I just don't think he is very philosophically minded because this is just a clear slippery slope fallacy or a black and white fallacy. It's like, do you even think beyond that? Like. And again, he should be in favor of laws where, like, you know, if a woman acts out against her husband, she should be thrown in prison. The husband should not be taking matters into his own hands. But isn't he in favor of wife beating? So which is it, Daniel? You, you're now contradicting yourself from your prior conversations and lives and debates and all this stuff. Which is it? Do you want a law? To, does people got to step in and punish? Or should the husband be the one who's taking care of this stuff? Pick a side because you're inconsistent. Yeah, Bradley Smith said, "Is this live or premiered? This right now is live. Uh, I hope you can tell. I don't know. Uh, it is definitely live. And by the way, uh, Derek Myth Vision Podcast is here. Derek, what's up, uh, dude? I think Christians and atheists can say amen to Matt Dillon on that one. Yes, yes I'm. I'm. I'm doubly mad at, at Daniel because not only is he just a horrible human being, he, he made me root for Matt Dillon. Like." Like, how dare you? Like, I was just like, get him, Matt. Like, I couldn't believe I was like, yeah, yeah so yeah. in his corner on this one. I I thought I was going to be like, well, I, I disagree with Daniel and Matt, but I found myself consistently far more in, in Matt's corner, e even in the earlier part where they were debating if God exists, because Daniel's arguments were just atrociously bad. Like, he can't even use like a contingency argument or a moral argument. He's just like, well, people around the world think God exists. That's evidence he does. I'm like, well, what else are you going to do? I like believe in nothing and then, you know, I'd be depressed. You know, you all have the, you know, the intuition that there is something out there. So why don't you just believe? That was, seriously, that's how you're going to go to a debate on, <laughs> on, on beliefs. That is just ridiculous, man. 
Uh, but yeah, Derek said, I think Christians and atheists can say amen. Uh, yeah, a, a man and a woman, uh, as that one uh, congressman once said in the cringiest way possible. <laughs> <laughs> I still have what? nightmares thinking about that. Uh, time, time marker, we had 2.33, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, so it, I, I just want to make this clear. Um, so Daniel, I just don't, I can't believe that he, he doesn't understand this. It's just hard for me to believe. But maybe, maybe it is true, I, because I don't think Daniel is a, is a particularly stupid individual. I don't think he's a stupid human being. I think he is quite intelligent on uh, in different ways. And... Um, he should be he should understand this stuff after thinking it through a little bit or after having a few discussions with uh, some people who think differently if he uh, if he keeps on insisting on well if you don't uh, advocate for this law then that means you are if you are for it then that means you allow it then this is a very stupid way of thinking and uh, he either really is incapable of ever understanding that or his intelligence is is capped and limited because of his uh, of his emotional and fanatical, you know, um, attachment to these to these uh, to these hardcore fundamental Islamic values that he wants to prefer over his own intellect. Uh, I, I, think, I think if you want, like, I, I watched his series Genius of Islam, which is ironically doesn't have a lot of genius in it or a lot it's of Islam. So stupid. In it. I, it's like genius Islam. He never talks about Islam or the genius of Islam. I'm like, what? Are, like, it's just him bashing like secular humanism or yeah. liberalism the whole time. And it's like the whole time I'm just like, okay, when do we get to the Islam part? Like, but like in that, it's, it's the whole thing. It's like his argument is like, if you reject Islam, even like not, not only if you just reject it, if you're like, if you're leaving like Javed Hashmi, where you're like a modernist Muslim. Uh, who, who's far cooler than Daniel by, by far. But if, if you just reject his super ultra traditional view of Islam, you go one step to the left of that, you start sliding down the slippery slope and you're a secular humanist. You want to eat bugs and live in pods and have pleasure machines and you're allowed to transition kids. And like, that's his argument. So like his whole shtick that he builds around is like, it's either his view or you slide down the slope. And that's just utter nonsense on so many levels. But that's why he's constantly doing this false dichotomy, because I think in his mind, uh, I could be wrong about this, but in his mind, I think that he thinks if he goes one small step to the left, he's going to slide down the slope and he'll just be to the left of like people like Matt Dillahunty or like you know, the, the, the far left as we know it today, which is just not true. It, but that's just that's how I think that's where he's coming from in this. Yeah, I think he's an ultra crepidarian. Uh, as Dr. Yasser Khadi wants us to call people uh, because he likes to use words that nobody ever uses anymore. Uh, apparently that makes you cool and intelligent or all that. Uh, I just I just want to clar clarify, by the way, David just told me his internet is down and he will come back once it starts working again uh, because they're terrible stuff that we're dealing with. Tell, tell him to just go on his phone or something. You know, like I, did, I just did, but he probably doesn't know how to do that. Um, <laughs> Good point. I didn't think of it like that. So uh, I, forgot how, I forgot how much he hates technology and changing his ways. Like he's still using like yeah. these old streaming services where like I can't even share my screen on his channel. He's like, you got to email me everything so I can put it on. I'm like, dude, I know. I know. Like, Every new new piece of technology is like, how does this work? What is <laughs> this? What is this magic? He doesn't know. He can't figure it out. <laughs> See, that's what happens when you reject Islam. You, you can't you can't work technology. <laughs> but I just want to uh, I just want to make clear to Daniel Hikikichu. I I don't think that he actually pays attention. I don't think he cares. I don't think he um, he will even try to understand. But uh, I want to, I just want to make it very simple. Um, you can be very much against nine year old kids or you know eleven or ten year old or twelve year old kids having sexual interactions with each other, uh, but you don't have to. Because of that, you don't have to advocate for laws which uh, which which ban those kids and also punish them 
if they do it or which put them in prison, which put them in jail, whatever it is. For example, uh, I can say I find it absolutely wrong for nine year olds to uh, to start engaging in sexual activities before they even before they even understand what it is and what it means, uh, which, by the way, is a very rare thing. Daniel apparently thinks that happens everywhere all the time. Nine year olds having sex with each other all over America. <laughs> um, <laughs> but th there are different ways you can yeah. tackle this. You can you can handle this, such as, uh, you know, adults pr uh, preventing such a thing from happening, uh, stepping in uh, and and educating these people once they notice that something really messed up is going on, which never happens. Uh, by never, I'm being hyperbolic, uh, contrary to generally Kikichu's idea that is happening everywhere in America. Uh, you could step in and fix it in different ways. Uh, that being against laws or not advocating for laws to punish those kids does not mean you are okay with kids actually doing that. There are different ways of handling these things, right? Yeah. Well, I, sometimes when I'm bored, I, I like to listen to Daniel talk about the way he thinks like Christians, Jews, or atheists act. And it's just like the biggest, like ridiculous caricature. Like you never ever hear like atheists wake up and they just pee all over the walls. <laughs> and then they go down to their nine-year-old and go, it's time for you to transition from boy to girl and start having sex. And then the moment you suggest marriage, well, they don't even want, they just want to ban marriage. Like it's, it's like you're reading like Muslims in caves, writing comics about what they think happens in the West. Like yeah. it's the most ridiculous satire, but some of his fans just eat it up. And it's like, do you guys like ever go outside and talk to people? Like this is just no, not the way people of are. Not. Of course not. I, I think um, Daniel's average, um, average fan is i don't i don't want to you know put them down and, and, and talk badly about them now but uh it's it's are often people that are very frustrated very angry are don't have much experience with uh with with society with other people uh especially with non-muslim people i would say uh it, it doesn't seem like he is talking to a very uh informed very you know socially capable very interesting uh you know they're very I don't know. Not, not not a very bright audience overall. It's, he's he's trying to appeal to those who uh, would otherwise, if they weren't too too lazy and too awkward, they would go and fight for some terrorist organization. But they can't do that because they're too shy. So they just sit down and listen to Daniel Kikichu. That's what it looks like. Uh, stop mm -hmm. listening to Daniel Kikichu. Daniel, stop lying. Stop being an idiot to to people. Stop spreading these nonsensical dumb ideas unless of course there is a different motive here i don't know i don't i don't really know it's 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 really weird like i don't see how this is going to benefit islam in the long run i mean it, it doesn't it, just, it, it isn't and I, i've talked to ex-muslims that are just like disgusted at this stuff and yeah. i'm seeing it more like I, there was a guy i know on um on tiktok that i helped deconvert from islam now he's a christian and so he cites right. some of this stuff occasionally. I mean, like, I talk, actually, I did a live like a week ago uh, on TikTok, and a Muslim came in who is from Albania. Well, he's ex Muslim and said he's looking for a church now. And a lot of this stuff on my channel helped him leave that, that worldview. He said he wasn't like a strong practicing Muslim. He was sort of raised it. But yeah, I mean, like, th this flamboyant anti intellectual nonsense, like, you know, like the, 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 the crap I've been dealing with lately, like Muhammad's in the Bible, which is, on the level of flat earthism it's on the level of flat earthism like you're telling me to deny what my very eyes can look at and see like i can see photos from space the earth is round i can read deuteronomy 33 i can read song of solomon 5 these aren't about muhammad you're telling you just me don't see it muhammad is in the bible of course he's oh, in the bible yeah. the, christians I, I and the, the, the christians and jews they all missed it they don't see it they don't understand you just gotta look at it like this you just gotta do this when you're, you're oh no, there he is right there you know <laughs> i did i did i ever tell you i found muhammad in the bible i did you did? Where I found him it? in Numbers 22. In Numbers 22, AP, Ooh. Muhammad is in there. I'll tell you this flat. I'll prove it. Everyone. In Numbers 22, there is a figure who comes from outside of Israel. Yes. And he, he prostrates himself before God. He has his mouth opened by an angel and he speaks miraculously. And the pagan that is around him is stunned, but he starts to persecute this talking individual. He's so amazed, he, but he persecutes him. And, but even though an angel has opened his mouth and given a miraculous speak, this, this figure that came from outside of Israel to prophesy, you know who it is? It's Balaam's talking ass. <laughs>
It's clearly nice. Muhammad. Nice. Muhammad is Balaam's talking ass. How nice. can you deny all the correlations? And <laughs> if you think that's crazy, that's what Dawah guys sound like when they tell you that Deuteronomy 33 or Song of Solomon 5 is about Muhammad. They do the exact same nonsense. Like, so yeah, from now on, as long as Dawah guys are going to do that, I'm going to say that, that uh, Balaam's talking ass in Numbers 22 is really a prophecy of the coming Muhammad. Yeah, well, Maureen so said, don't give, him, don't give him any ideas, IP. They, they, they might <laughs> They might start using that. Like, uh, okay, maybe he's not mentioned in the best way, but at least he's there. You know? <laughs> I would love that. I would love that. Please. Yes, Muslims, use that. Tell us Muhammad is Balaam's talking ass. That's what I want to hear. Uh, it's your auditor from Assassin's Creed took a break here from being an assassin and uh, started and made a super chat. Uh, <laughs> I'm a fan of the franchise, by the way. Uh, IP, AP, and David, my holy trinity. You can't say that, man. This is, this is very disrespectful and blasphemous. Uh, my holy trinity, thank you for exposing all the bullshit and lies that come out of these Muslim apologetics. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. I appreciate it very much. Also became a member of the channel. Thank you. Now I have an assassin that I can send after uh, all of these people. Thanks you for joining. Uh, I appreciate that very much. AP and David, you should add a room spray to your future merch and call it Islam Repellent with Daniel's pictures on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Good idea. Good idea. Possibly. Um, anyway. This, tell the people in this country that are following secular humanism. Tell them. They need to hear it more than anyone. Secular, secular humanists. humanists who are secular humanists who are the I'm ones telling who are in, in, don't fuck kids and don't advocate for it. Yeah, and maybe they, they need the to secular follow humanists say, Maybe they need to follow Why would we do that? Why, maybe never they need to follow done that. that. Nobody's ever done that. Maybe they it's need to follow It's you that. that have done yeah. that on stage. The sexual for revolution that had. From secular, a secular revolution humanist basis was not about nine year olds. Yes, it was. No, yes, it, it wasn't. wasn't. You don't know the, what, about the sexual liberation front. Okay. You don't know about NAMBLA. You don't know about all of I these. I know about NAMBLA, and we've worked yeah. against NAMBLA. Yes. Yeah. Look at the unlike you. Theorists. Stop interrupting me, okay? You got it. You got no, it. No, the it. no interruption shit is done when you start yeah. talking about whether or not nine year olds should be fucking. You know, you're not. Okay. You know, you okay. know what's ironic is he's talking about the dangers of NAMBLA, but he's. Daniel's the guy that has been promoting Bruce Ryan for years, who's spoken at conferences in the Netherlands that promote pedophilia or pedophilic interactions. Like Bruce Ryan is the famous psychologist who had had this whole controversy where one of his studies was condemned by both houses of Congress because he was saying there's no damaging effects uh, from men having sexual interaction with boys. And that's the guy that Daniel was promoting for years until I called him out on it and said, you've not read these guys' studies. You just read the abstract and assumed you knew what the studies were about. Because Bruce Ryan's in his papers, he's going, he, like in his big famous meta-analysis that was super controversial. He says like, so girls, for example, uh, they tend to report negative interactions from uh, the, this type of interact, this sexual interaction with older men. Uh, but the boys don't, according to Bruce Ryan. But now, there are so many studies that have counteracted Bruce Ryan and, sh and showed that's not the case. Like there was an umbrella study done, I think, in the past few years that showed this. And I've cited it in some of my hangouts. I think when you were on my channel, we cited it there. But mm -hmm. so Daniel's attacking Matt here, pulling up Nambla. He needs to look in the mirror. He's the one who's been promoting Bruce Ryan for years. So, you know, not directly, but like accidentally, I would say he's promoting uh, studies that Nambla has used. Like in my debate with Daniel, he cited this Bruce Ryan meta-analysis. NAMBLA has used that meta-analysis. Like that's what's one of the controversial things about it is that NAMBLA uses it uh, and Daniel uses it. So it's like, it's just such an ironic point for him to bring up. He's attacking Matt and trying to throw NAMBLA in this when he's the one who's been kind of been on the same side with NAMBLA without even realizing. It. Let, let's let's clarify for those who are not aware of what, uh, what what this is and what we're talking about. So NAMBLA is, is an organization that is uh, an extremely unpopular, uh, very, very, very unpopular, very uh, terrible, <laughs> disgraced organization that uh, advocates for uh, lowering the age of uh, of consent and for basically pedophilia. That's, that's how it's described, pedophilia and, and mm -hmm. pedophilia. And, and uh, it, it emerged around the same time that the that the sexual revolution was, uh, you know, is basically was taking shape and taking place. Um, however, it wasn't supported by the vast majority of people who, for example, went with that movement or who were secularists mm -hmm. or humanists or whatever it is. So um, it, is, it is an incredibly unpopular organization. It is an incredibly uh, shady organization with uh, very few members 
and in fact they held illegal meetings and uh, were often infiltrated by by police and by detectives uh, that uh, took names of people who go there in order to uh, crack down on actual pedophiles and 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 what what Daniel here is doing is this is what he always does this is a very good example of what he always does with his with his um with his with his fallacies he uh tries to discredit entire ideas entire groups by going and picking some very uh unpopular publicly disliked uh little movement or little group little spark somewhere and says look at this you, look at this you are all this this is what comes from you this is what this is how bad you guys are because of that little group there which everyone among you rejects but that's nevertheless one of you so that means you are all just like that that's what he basically mm -hmm. does your movement is oh. completely wrong because there's a tiny little group there which nobody likes but uh, because of the existence of the tiny group, you are all like that. This would be like us sitting here and um, arguing that some uh, the most messed up groups within the uh, Islamic world, within the Islamic framework, within Islam, um, would be you know, could be taken as an example to to declare that all of Islam is absolutely horrible because there is this little uh, group among the Islamists that advocate for going out there and killing and brutally raping and uh, maybe eating uh, other human beings. This is just a completely dishonest, deceptive, nonsensical tactic. It's a fallacy. And it's a clear yeah. sign of of, uh, of very, very bad faith uh, debate on Dan and Kikichu's part. Yeah, if you want, I got the study. You can put it up there, and I'll just show what study Daniel has cited. This is a study that Nambla has used and Daniel used in my debate with him. Uh, this is the famous meta-analysis. Oh, wait, 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 wait. David, what's up? Hey. Oh, he's back. I'm shocked. I'm at point zero eight. I'm on my phone right now. I'm at point zero eight. Anyway, the uh, been having uh, internet problems here. It's usually in the middle of the night when no one notices except me because I'm up. But, uh, yeah, this time it went out uh, now which sucks because I was in the middle of a live stream and my wife was in the middle of an online class, but, but you were in the middle of a live stream. Oh, okay. Interesting. Hmm? Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah how's, how, how's this work? How's this work? By the way, I can't tell on my phone here. You... I mean, it's okay. You just need to stop waving your phone around, like see if you can set it somewhere and just sit it there. Like, a, like a still it camera. is stuttering. The, 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 the video is kind of uh, lagging badly, but the audio seems quite very, very okay. But it does look like there is a lag in the audio um, where you hear what we are saying a little bit later. Yeah. Um, hence me saying I shouldn't go on because I have a bad internet connection and you saying, no, do it anyway. Yeah, yeah. I had the actual text from you saying no. Come on, anyway. You will use it as proof. No. Um, don't you think that this is? Don't you think this, this is going to be a distraction that I should therefore wait until the internet starts working again? No, no, you shouldn't wait. It's, it's pretty. Okay, uh, I'll it's, just sit there. It's it's quite it's quite okay. We can. I just noticed that there is no big discrepancy in the audio transmission either. So everything is cool. You have no excuse. Since that and... excuse has crumbled, what else are you going to say? You're finished, boy. You're finished, boy. Wait. You see, Allah has punished your internet connection. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so, Mike. You know, so, yeah, you know, he brings up Nambla and tries to associate Nambla with Matt's views. And But this is a study that Daniel Hakikichu has cited and Nambla has cited. Daniel cited this in my debate with him as evidence that child marriage should be allowed. But Daniel did not read it because if you go down to the conclusions and I, I like I went through and highlighted as much as I could when I was going through because I actually read the study like unlike you know Daniel Kikachu but he read the, the conclusions yeah. he probably did yeah he says in general findings from the current review suggest that socio legal definitions of child sexual abuse have more scientific validity in the case of female children and adolescents than for male children and adolescents given the higher rate of unwanted negative experiences for women. So he's using this argument, this paper here, to argue for child marriage. And they're saying that women have negative experiences from sexual relationship with old, older men when they're being abused. And Ryan's argument is that, uh, the, the study authors here, is that the boys don't report negative interactions. So this is why NAMBLA used this study. They cherry-picked this one study because so many other ones found negative interactions for boys and girls. But NAMBLA cherry-picked this study. Daniel cited it, but at least NAMBLA read it. 
Daniel didn't even read it, and yet they're on the same page citing this paper that they cherry picked. This is very funny. It's uh, Daniel Hikikichu basically um, discrediting others uh, and equating them with with Ambla, but then uh, it is him who actually uh, engages in their very tactics and yeah. uh, probably unknowingly. You know, he's not that that good with uh, sticking to the actual paper and reading it. As as he pointed out before, he uh, reads the abstract and then makes up his opinion about what the research paper actually says uh, without reading the paper itself and that's just maybe he can't read very well i don't know i don't know what else to say i don't yeah. know i would i would man there's a there's an umbrella study that was published recently that included this meta-analysis and like numerous other meta-analysis and said no uh, typically boys and girls have negative interactions and have mental disorders from these types of interactions they just will note that typically if the child gets counseling and they go through therapy it very unlikely to be permanent damage unless it's severe so that, that's at least a good thing. But uh, the, Ryan's paper has been criticized by a, a lot of people. If you read Anna Sattler's book, Predators, another thing I read in preparation for my debate with Daniel, she notes that uh, this study that I'm looking at on the screen right now has been heavily criticized by other psychologists for limited data, uh, methodological issues, and again, just cherry picking. So, But again, this is this is the standard of evidence you get from like organizations like NAMBLA or Daniel. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's pathetic. It is pathetic. It is pathetic. Okay, uh, let us continue. Uh oh, oh we lost. Did we lose David him again. Just died again. Yeah. Amateur hour. David is dead. David is dead. Uh, <laughs> would you have Thomas Alexander? Who is Thomas Alexander? Would you have Thomas Alexander? Or Thomas? I don't know who Thomas Alexander is. I haven't heard of him either. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Nobody knows. All right. Some hero oh, here. Standard. You're not Watch some hero. Here. Wow, oh, I'm amazing. the guy that's wow. here debating oh, and fighting. You're, so, you're so heroic, and man. You you're such a hero. Fuck kids. No, <laughs> look at this guy, man. Look at perverse. Look at your sick mind, okay? Let's my you, sick it, mind. <laughs> why does Matt have a? Why is Matt the one that has a sick mind when he says don't f kids? Because you are the one advocating for having, for marrying and having sex with little children. What in the? <laughs> you know, how how is he the one who has a sick mind? You know everything is backwards in Islam. That's, <laughs> that's the only logical explanation here. You 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 have a sick mind if you want to sleep with adults. Maybe maybe it's you should be. You know remember remember after my debate, Daniel was actually advocating. He cited this paper. Uh, well, he cited a graph he found on Reddit that we expose on my channel. It linked to a paper he was trying to argue that men are just naturally attracted to 13 and 14 year olds these are the ages they just naturally pick and then you and i on my channel looked at that graph and dem and went to the actual study and the study didn't actually say that it said the opposite but daniel didn't even look at the study he just found a graph of the study and he tried to argue that men are just naturally attracted to 14 year olds so maybe in daniel's mind he thinks that it's sick and perverted if you're not attracted to a 14 year old because that's what he was directly advocating for in those live streams we were doing back and forth with them. Yeah. Imagine, imagine uh, we're having a discussion here. Uh, let's just dumb this down and uh, make it very simple. We're having a discussion. Uh, this guy comes and says, so I think it should be completely acceptable for, 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 for 50 year old men to marry and have uh, sex with five year old girls, or let's say, let's say nine year old girls uh, once they show signs of puberty. And I then say, what? Don't f kids, and you're like, what? Look at this guy's perverted mind. That's what, he <laughs> That's what basically just happened here. Wow, man. <laughs> this, is, this is just this is ridiculous. It's, it's like a parody. It's like this can't be real. Yeah. Fine. Well, how about we talk about My your sick mind? You want to talk about the your liar personal... advocating for you want to talk marriage about marriage and sex is talking about look, my sick mind no, while no, no, inventing this, a man. fantasy. Come on, James. Some moderation, moderation here. Come on. Okay. Just shouting I'll the shut f up. word is not an argument. Just shout Correct, and neither is saying okay. we should let nine-year-olds marry. Yeah, so we don't need to talk about personal life, okay? okay you don't need back, to make any accusations against me. I'll talk about question, your boyfriend, then. so don't talk about me. So the thing about uh, this whole argument. Yeah, yeah, is, there, is there any other part that you want to go to, or should we just continue here? We could, um, we could go to his uh, lovely pleasure machine 
<laughs> like, like that's his whole entire opening statement for this section of the debate. His whole op- Daniel's opening section is him going on for like ten minutes about how th- this 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 fantasy world where like these these people make a pleasure machine and everyone wants to get the pleasure machine, but Muslims are going, no, we don't want the pleasure machines because okay, they're ruining yeah, yeah, families. Yeah. Like that was I, like, I watched it live and that was that was a cringy, stupid thing that he talked about. It, it was. It's like it was pure cringe. It was pure unadulterated cringe that's not been altered by any sort of additives or anything. It's like the pure cringe you just get from the ground. It just wow, that was something. I I, I kept I kept listening to that part as I'm driving, going, is he going to get to the punchline? Like we get your stupid story. People will like pleasure. What what's your point here? Like I, I, I even as a Christian, like I'm going they're going like. <laughs> this is not helping your case against secular humanism because, like, there's so many things I could just or if I'm cause they're trying to steal me into secular humanist, they're they're going to disagree with this scenario because I, I also answer. I also heard him say before something like um, that uh, if you if you eat an unlimited amount of candy and nobody stops you, then you will get sick and you will die. Uh, and, and that's what liberalism basically is. It's just unlimited pleasure, <laughs> unlimited candy. If you eat it all, you will die. You have to have a limit. Like, are you are you dumb, man? I I just don't. Yeah. This is basic. This is a summary of how Daniel Kikichu thinks. But let us have what, a listen he, to it a little bit. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, what he's doing is he. I think, and I'm, if I'm trying to be a little bit more charitable, I think he's trying to build up Jonathan Haidt's work about these different moral foundations people have, and typically liberals uh, tend to focus more on care and harm or equality. It's like there there are two things. Whereas like conservatives have a much they have more moral foundations, so they'll focus on care, uh, they'll focus on equality, but also liberty, uh, mm-hmm. purity, uh, authority, and loyalty, I think, are the six. And so liberals just tend to focus more on two, uh, but so and conservatives tend to focus on all six. But that doesn't mean that liberals think that purity and authority are things that should be thrown out of the water. Like if you read Jonathan Haidt, He'll note that when liberals are asked about certain authority figures, they think they should be respected, like teachers, for example, like public mm-hmm. school teachers. The children need to respect their authority as a moral foundation. They just tend to focus more on care and equality as moral foundations than these other ones. So Daniel ignores like that whole aspect of this thing and just says, well, that's all that liberals care about. They just they just want care. They just want pleasure. Uh, that's all they really want. And that's just simply a huge straw man. He has, his entire view of Christians or Jews or secular humanists just utter su- satire. It's not, it's so bad it's comical. Uh, no, you're just being Islamophobic here. <laughs> to know the value of life unplugged. So Pleasure Inc. focuses on the younger. Okay, uh, where, is, where does he start about? Let, let's see, where does he start talking about Pleasure Inc.? This is, for those who haven't watched this, it's. Uh, it's it's pretty ridiculous. It, it, it's like we, yeah, we should go back to his uh, his whole play, opening statement here. Pleasure. I think it's. Look for pleasure. <laughs> People talking about the pleasure machine in the comments. <laughs> I mean, like he, it was like a ten minute thing. I think he st- starts at a two fifty. 216, I believe. Yeah, two sixteen. I have it here. Uh, by the way, I want to quickly do something here. Um, for those who are who know Daniel Hikikichu, he is somebody who likes to um, appeal to comment sections, to audiences. He likes to encourage his his trolls, send them over, make uh, try to make himself look victorious and his opponent ridiculous. And then he picks out comments that he cherry picks and says, look at that, look, even they agree with me. If we want to play his tricks... We should maybe just look at the comment section here and see what I, the what the average person here thinks of Diana Kikichu. Yeah, it's actually in favor of Matt uh, as far as far as what I saw in this in this in this section here. But I, I love getting comments like that because like even after my debate, like I remember getting comments like from like this like I, I was a devout Christian for thirty years and after watching yeah. your debate with Daniel Kikichu, I'm now a Salafi. Like I've just converted. Like on the spot. I, I was a bishop in Rome serving the Pope himself. And now because of this debate, <laughs> I have become a Muslim. Like it's like, yeah. like here's, here's okay. one. Love how Daniel has no problem defending obviously horrible things when he has to pretend the Quran is the truth, but starts crying when Matt points out what he has said. <laughs> uh, uh, I, the, gotta, uh, 
I guarantee there's some comment down there going like, Not I was Daniel. an atheist. Yeah. I was a transgender atheist and now I've converted to Islam. <laughs> like, it's, but we'll he, he, here's what here. people think. Daniel getting angry at someone in the public laughing about his ridiculous uh, arguments. He, he did start fighting and uh, calling out people in the audience because they were laughing at him and he started fighting with the audience which is the dumbest thing that you can do in a public debate probably i don't know either daniel is playing a character or he's seriously misinformed the amount of absurdities he spewed throughout this entire debate is laughable uh, daniel kikachu is the king of making false equivalences you support forcing children to go to school therefore forcing them to marry is fine apparently giving the child an education is the same as forcing to marry a six-year-old so <laughs> <laughs> Daniel looked so proud of himself that he got uh, that jab in about art and he must have been sitting on it for a while. It's funny how those who claim how moral they are turn out to be the worst among us. Uh, I've Who's never learning? seen someone in my, I don't know, in my life straw man more than Daniel. That was an absolutely incredible disp display of straw man. Bravo. So the comment section, Daniel, since you care so much about public opinion, about so much about what uh, people apparently uh, allegedly say, about the debaters here this is what the comment section thinks about uh what you are doing about your performance i'm sure everything is going according to plan here yeah anyway i well there was a comment i saw i went and just found that it. it's apparently someone said i can't believe he suggested that not only mike jones but also matt dillanty is okay with kids having sex when he was the one literally arguing for it in the debate what a yeah, pos yeah. i can't blame matt for getting spicy with him i'm like yeah i, I can't believe he suggested yeah. yeah yeah that's right here yeah i was like yeah, I I, I I laughed in the car because I'm like, no, this is this is ridiculous. Like, you can't but if you buy this crap, I'm sorry, you're not a critical thinker. I mean, yeah. like, clearly he's the one who's advocating for that, but he wants to pretend we are. Like, come on, <laughs> this is yeah. so stupid. <laughs> this is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. He is dishonest, and I don't know. I just for every single time that I or anyone else uh, said that Daniel is uh, at least honest, I. I regret it. I take it all back. Mm -hmm. He's definitely not the honest one here. Thank you very much. Well, here thanks is. for that opening, Matt. We'll kick it over to Daniel for his 10 minute opening as well. Oh, he started with that right away, right? Okay. Daniel, thanks. Oh, he does. Yeah. The floor is all yours. God, this is so dumb. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> he wrote this out, too. He wrote this out. <laughs> Here's a thought experiment. Imagine there's a company called Pleasure Inc. and they invent the pleasure machine. <laughs> you strap a person in, pull down the virtual reality helmet, plug in a few diodes into the skull that tap into the pleasure centers of the brain. You pull the switch and then pure unadulterated bliss. The brain implants and the VR are so powerful that any pleasurable experience you want to have, you can have it. You can satisfy basic bodily pleasures, but the tech is so advanced that you can s simulate any desire. You want a vacation on the beach with supermodels? No problem. You want to travel the world and sample cuisine from every region? No problem. Every form of pleasure and entertainment is now at your fingertips. The pleasure machine comes on market and is heavily advertised. People start using it for recreation on the weekends, but the machine works too well. People can't get themselves off of it. Eventually, pleasure machine users are strapped in for 10, 15, even 20 hours a day. They can't stop using it. The constant supply of dopamine is too much to resist. Before the pleasure machine, people had time for their extended families. People would get together with aunts, uncles, cousins. If you had elderly parents, you would take care of them. If you had grandparents, you could spend time with them. But as you know, what during this whole time, I thought, uh, I wish, I wish he could, he could hear the live chat here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> since he cares so much about what people like it's, think. It sounds like a, it's like the one comment there. It sounds like a Black Mirror episode. Like this is this dystopian. <laughs> like, like. Do we really think humans are so like this is this is my problem with like, like so Muslim apologists like Daniel is they they think humans are so simple and stupid that we just resort to basic instincts with whatever. This is why women have to cover themselves constantly because if they if they show a little bit of ankle, the men are gonna go crazy and just start raping them. Like it's like maybe sometimes people don't resort to basic instincts and pleasure constantly like we desire the higher purposes like you should read isaiah berlin on the difference between positive and negative freedom here i mean like yeah. there's a it, lot more to humanity than this it's like um those all, all of those dystopian um you know stories those dystopian uh fantasies that were kind of uh crafted in the early early 20th century 
uh, I don't know whether you want to talk about uh, 1984 or uh, Brave New World or even uh, even Animal Farm, which is kind of a which is more of a often often allegorical uh, thing. But it, it, when you read those books, they all have uh, what they have in common is they depict a an absurdly, insanely dystopian world. And if you if you sit down and take it literally and think this is what the world could really look like then that's probably a little bit far-fetched and absurd but uh but if you if you take it as just um as a story that sends a a message but depicts things in an obviously unrealistic way then you might be getting it a little bit more right and what daniel is doing here is he is taking all of that way too literally and basically sitting down in the early 20 in the early 20th century and thinking oh look about think about a future where humans will have no social life anymore and nobody will talk to each other nobody will interact with each other because there is this pleasure machine and they are all hooked to this and they are consuming to no end this is what will happen if you keep going with liberalism if you don't follow islam it's just so ridiculously dumb i mean people wrote these books over a hundred years ago, Daniel, and you are coming with it. You are coming up with that now. So. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's just it, we know the humans actually desire more. Humans desire purpose, family, to be a part of a community. Like this is this is the like if you've seen that thing, that that trend happening on TikTok where women are asking men how much they think about the Roman Empire, and men are going like once a day or once a week kind of thing, and women are stunned. And it's like, well, sometimes men have this this yearning to be a part of something bigger than themselves or to sacrifice themselves for something greater than themselves it's not just all about pleasure human psychology is very complex and so i don't think we would live in this dystopian world because humans are just going to start naturally seeking not the simple pleasures but the higher pleasures like purpose and meaning and the in contact with the sacred and these types of things yeah, why is the comment section talking about uh, Candace Owens? I don't really understand what's what's happening. Oh, let's not even get into that. Uh, Candace Owens has no place anywhere here. Uh, I, w I wanted to say something more direct, but uh, Candace Owens has me blocked <laughs> because you I told him my actual opinion. So uh, why would you come here and advocate for Candace Owens? Candace Owens is an, a, a dishonest terrible person to, to Some, look at for information sometimes i get a little jealous of all the people that have blocked you i'm like oh why am i not that cool like i was <laughs> i was a little annoyed for a while because like you know you and d wood and me were all like attacking tate and like he blocked you two and but he didn't block me even though i was and then finally tate blocked me and i finally felt like i was in the club like it was it was nice yeah and you you can never reach uh my uh my my high tier in the club of being <laughs> blocked by so many people including candace owens uh and, and it's it's not like she banned she, it's, not, it's not like she blocked me because i said something terrible to her it's just that i yeah. pointed out that pointed out the stuff that that andrew tate actually did and her basically promoting him and showing yeah, a video and then he should then she immediately blocked me That's i'm all for blocking people if they insult you if they do yeah, character same, assassination same. like yeah but if you're just like pointing out like the obvious facts like with tate like that's there's no reason to do that yeah she is a terrible uh i don't think that she has an ounce of honesty she's just a mm. a grifter she will sell her butt for recognition and uh and whatever it is and if you think she's a reliable trustworthy source of information you need to rethink everything <laughs> but just, anyway enough about the uh or did you want to say something no, I stay out of politics, so I, I don't even I don't even know her politics, so I, I won't even comment on it. Her politics are whatever um, some guys who are in her comment section want her to be. Oh, okay. uh, that's basically it. <laughs> more people get hooked on the pleasure machine. There's no time for extended family. And let's be honest, what's more fun, fulfilling any fantasy or sitting and talking with grandma? As the pleasure machine continues to spread, the whole concept of extended family dies off. People only have time for their spouse and their kids, but even this nuclear family gradually becomes too much of a burden. The only thing that people want to do is to plug themselves in. Over time, pleasure machines get a bad reputation for disrupting families and sales start to drop. Pleasure Inc. Realize it, it realizes it needs a new strategy. First of all, let's improve the machine so that people don't have to worry about unplugging themselves to eat 
anything the body needs biologically can now be supplied by the machine so that hypothetically you can stay plugged in nonstop. Second, let's get the government to subsidize the machines. We want to make sure that anyone who wants a pleasure machine can afford to get one, even if it takes government assistance. Say, sign me up. Send me one. Where can I buy it? This is a, this is a can long Can I invest list. in it? I want to invest in the stock of this. Ooh. I feel really bad for Daniel's grandma. Like, is this a long way of saying he doesn't want to talk to his grandma? Like, it's really boring, grandma, when we have to talk so much. Like, this, this whole analogy of a pleasure machine, just to make that note, grandma, could you try to be a little more exciting so I don't have to get a pleasure machine eventually to deal with all oh, the boredom? If, if there was a if there was a stock for this, I would immediately want to uh, want, want to buy it, invest in this. It sounds it sounds like a very interesting thing to. To make, like, make a lot like of money, but it's very unrealistic, unfortunately. I like what Daniel's building up to, that if you become a secular liberal, you will eventually be plugged into the Matrix. That's Ooh. what this is all about. You're going to be in the Matrix. This is what him and the Tater are trying to stop. The <laughs> Matrix is coming through the pleasure machines here. It's going to happen. And then we'll all be living in the Matrix, and then eventually we'll have regular jobs in the Matrix and have to do normal things. And so we'll just be back where we were. It's, the cycle will continue. The funny thing is, uh, the entire time as he was talking about the pleasure machine, I kept thinking, uh, it sounds like he's talking about some uh, some sex toys or something like that. You know? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I was like, what is he going on about? What are his <laughs> fantasies? Like, could you actually make an argument and stop talking about how much these great these pleasure machines are? Like. <laughs> Man, and it's uh, he actually said sat down and put this together and thought, yeah, this is wow, this is a brilliant <laughs> idea. Wow, let me add this here and that here. Wow, this will make it even more, uh, you know, understandable. And this will highlight how bad it really is and how much you should not have the pleasure machine because it is actually bad. This is brilliant. I will convince so many people with this. And the reaction is like, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> <laughs> This is this is this is what he thinks. This is what he thinks of anybody who's not a Muslim. That we are just these basic subhuman cavemen that just me want pleasure, me no need anything. Like pretty much, we pretty have much. unless you got Islam, that's all you think about, according to him. It's it's such a, a, a caricature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Third, more aggressive marketing techniques are needed. People who oppose the pleasure machine say that it destroys marriage, destroys families. Now they're even saying it destroys cultures and religions because maintaining culture or religious traditions requires people to make an effort, to work hard, to make personal sacrifices, not to mention maintain bonds with others. How can you do any of that if you're strapped into a pleasure machine for most of the hours of the day? In the beginning... <laughs> This is a strap. Wait, I hate when someone comes at me with a strapped on pleasure machine. <laughs> oh man, those are the worst days. <laughs> I think we should do a commercial where like we take mm. his talk here about it and just like put like se sensual music under it. And Daniel's going, The pleasure machine. I know it sounds like he's strapped in for days. Yeah, it sounds like he's advertising this thing. That's amazing, man. <laughs> amazing. You could take this and, and, and make a parody with it. I, I, wa I, I want to take this whole script of him ranting about the pleasure machine and want to type it to chat GPT and see what it says. <laughs> yeah, this is a commercial in the making. Use the machines, and then sometimes they'd miss prayers. Sometimes they'd miss going to church. Oh, no. And then they start. Oh, no. They miss prayers. <laughs> they miss one of the five daily prayers. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what the future will look like? Like every <laughs> every Muslim around the world. Oh no! Missing major holidays like fasting and Ramadan, and other oh, important no. cultural no, no, rituals. No, we can't have that. So the opponent, just like every Muslim around the world does today, anyway. Oh no! <laughs> of the pleasure machines now claim that the product not only destroys marriage, family, and culture, but also community and religion. How do we counter that in our marketing? Well, it's hard to deny the accusation, so let's embrace it. Let's tell people that the pleasure machine is actually liberating people from the shackles. Marriage, family, community, and religion are all sources of so much toil and headache. I, I just want to add some dramatic Islamic humming music to this. To mm. make it, uh, make <laughs> you it know, I know D. Wood has cited some negative effects of, from Ramadan, but I actually found an interesting study on infant health in India showed that Ramadan leads to low birth weight in girls uh, and boys, like in infants itself. It's actually kind of interesting. That That's good. Ramadan, it's an alternative yeah. to working out and all of that. You know, otherwise... <laughs> yeah, it's kind of scary. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. It's, it's pretty good. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Yeah. We're only we're four minutes into his opening, by the way, and he's still going on about pleasure machines. Like this, <laughs> this is his opening statement, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is him. This is what he thinks is going to be his argument. Oh yes. <laughs> Okay, I can't use this one. I I, I already use this for my intro. This, yeah. by the way, this is this is the one. This is without the beat. You could, you gotta modify your um, your opening so that randomly in your opening you just hear Daniel go pleasure machine. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to play some dramatic music in the back while he's doing this, but or some dramatic Islamic music while he's doing this. But unfortunately, I can't find anything right now. I've, apparently, I have nothing saved. Terrible, 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 terrible. It's amateur terrible. hour. It's amateur hour. Anyway. Why bother with that when you can enjoy limitless pleasure? The pleasure machine is the great liberator. Furthermore, marriage, family, and religion are the source of so much pain and suffering. Reach ultimate pleasure Wait, with the pleasure what is, machine. What is his view of Islamic heaven? It sounds like the pleasure machine. I know. That's that's immediately what I thought because he's basically describing what the Islamic heaven looks like. In the Islamic heaven, you go and uh, you sit in a, in a row with all of your Islamic buddies with their beards and their dresses and you recline on these uh, on the, on these these thrones and you drink out of these these cups you drink wine there are there are rivers of wine are flowing you have your your virgins that are specifically made for you designed for you by Allah that you have sex with with all of them and whenever you want it's just ultimate pleasure all the time just bodily so, pleasures so it seems like Daniel should be in favor of these pleasure machines because it's just bringing Islamic heaven to earth for everybody ahead of time so he can get his reward right now what is he upset about is he but he doesn't he want upset? humans he doesn't want humans to steal allah's idea because allah is, <laughs> is already allah has the pleasure machine and he's going to yes. make everyone have it in, this, in heaven that's what this is he's advertising for his love <laughs> right now about the pleasure guys join his love you get a pleasure machine when you die come on join his love <laughs> think about look how wonderful this is <laughs> Join Islam and reach ultimate pleasure with the pleasure machine. <laughs> you pleasure life is opening statement I've ever heard from any debate ever. Pleasure like you have never experienced it before. <laughs> you will get it right here in Islam. Ultimate pleasure. Who doesn't have conflict with parents? Who doesn't have an insensitive spouse? Who doesn't feel judged when going to church or the mosque? To make matters worse, these institutions are also rife with abuse. There's domestic abuse, child abuse, abuse in the church and the mosque. Also, these institutions are rife with unjust hierarchies and inequality and lack of consent. The pleasure machine, on the other hand, is the great equalizer. When you're strapped in, you can enjoy yourself as much as the elites. Look how excited he is. Man, he <laughs> really, he needs to stop stop saying strap on. I feel like that's a Freudian <laughs> slip. Uh, what is he doing? Like, and it, again, this is just, adver he's, he, 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 you could just replace the pleasure strap, machine with Islamic strap on heaven. A pleasure machine. <laughs> <laughs> it's so gross, but Stop saying that term, dude. Like, don't you know when you end up? Like, <laughs> uh, be scared of like, the strap on pleasure machine. It's coming for you. Run like, away when you see the strap on pleasure machine. <laughs> like, you got to stop with that terminology, man. It's not It's not healthy. But like, <laughs> You could just take his entire opening statement, switch out pleasure machine, replace it with Islamic heaven. It'd be yeah. the exact same thing. Man, this is just... I, I love how Matt is just sitting there and taking it all in. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can almost hear Matt's thoughts. Like, how did I get sucked into this? When is this over? I just want to go home <laughs> and not deal with this anymore. <laughs> is the great equalizer when you're strapped in you can enjoy yourself as much as the elites everyone is equal in the pleasure machine this is the marketing we need to push through tv movies music books social media. and if anyone opposes our product we simply accuse them of being backwards irrational and filled with hate everyone everyone's equal when i put on my, when i strap on my pleasure machine i'll comfort you all <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is so ridiculous, man. Daniel, I, I don't know if you thought this would go over very well with, with the audiences, but uh, I, I this I think of something new, man. Yeah, he, does he think we would be sitting here going, oh, yes, yes, very inquisitive. Wow, so, so 
deep, huh? This Islamic heaven. I mean, pleasure machine is really a problem that we should not want. I mean, yes, you're wow. I see. Here, here, sir. We should we should turn it. We should we should make a book. We should <laughs> we should sign a contract and write a book on this. Please write for us, Daniel. Write a whole book about the pleasure machine. Let us turn this into a movie. And we have <laughs> we already have some. Uh, specific actresses uh, and actors in mind for this pleasure machine. It, it will be very enjoyable. Please let us do this, Daniel. We are halfway through his opening <laughs> statement, and he's still going on about his strap-on pleasure machine. <laughs> I can't even say it. And equality. Are you a fan of domestic abuse? Are you a fan of child molestation, of white supremacy, of religious bigotry? What are you, some kind of terrorist? Pleasure Inc. realizes that the <laughs> older generations are going to be wiser and won't be the biggest advocates of their product because they have more life experience and know the value of life unplugged. So Pleasure Inc. focuses on the younger generations with targeted ads on TikTok and elsewhere. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> so Pleasure Inc. focuses on the younger generation with targeted ads. Look at that. Matt has got a look on his face like, is, are we almost, like, it, it's the same face I had. Are we almost done with this analogy? Like, could you just get there? But he's laughing in his head, but he's not letting it out. The value of life unplugged. So Pleasure Inc. focuses on the younger <laughs> generations with targeted ads on TikTok and elsewhere. Pleasure Inc. also wants its message of equality and liberation to re reach youth in schools. Let's make sure that all schools raise awareness about the benefits of using the pleasure machine and how not using it can cause pain and suffering in life. Adoption of the pleasure machine continues to spread at rapid pace and Pleasure Inc. decides to break into new markets internationally. The only problem is many countries are banning the pleasure machine. They don't want their societies being disrupted, their cultures and religions being wiped. This is so stupid. Yeah. Uh, but yes, thank you for bringing exactly. up good ink. We, totally we don't want Islam disrupting our society with your Islamic heaven ideas and fantasies, Daniel. That's why we're banning it. Like, yes. So Daniel now says that the good thing for society to do would be to, to ban Islam and his Islamic heaven views of pleasure machines that you strap on and go after everyone with. And, you know, like, like, like again, everything he's saying is just Islamic heaven. I don't get his point here. Like, does he not hear himself? Like, we don't want your strap-on machine. We don't want it. <laughs> get out of there. Get out with it. We don't want it. <laughs> Wiped out with the introduction of this technology, but due to heavy lobbying, Pleasure Inc. has infiltrated every level of Western government, and they leverage their connections to pass new international law. The new law is that every nation must allow their citizens to buy a pleasure machine. Not only that, but must, every nation must subsidize the pleasure machine to make it available to every citizen. This is a moral imperative. Why? Because the pleasure machine, as we know, is the great liberator and the great equalizer. If nations so in the west uh liberalism as an idea um took hold very much across the western world became established people started sympathizing with it uh personally personally adopting it personally thinking you know hey it's it's a good idea if we make a if we establish uh you know societies where uh we just we, we leave each other alone as, as long as nobody harms each other and where we actually care about uh happiness and you know, where we maximize human happiness and uh where we reduce human suffering and where we prevent each other from causing suffering on others uh the, lots of very reputable very respectable people uh turned that idea into a more coherent set of thoughts and wrote books on this People discussed this in, in, in institutions and in schools forever. The idea of liberalism became uh, very much entrenched in Western society. And, but he thinks, no, no, that idea that was set up, that idea is all just about pleasure, all about pleasure, just giving you pleasure, like a pleasure machine, and, and denying all kinds of, uh, you know, thinking for yourself and all kinds of traditional thought. It's all about pleasure, all about, you know, having having all these, these, these delicious pleasures in life. And it was forced upon society. It was forced. It was basically people were forced to accept it. What what in the hell is this? Yes, you need we need Islam force on the society where you are promised pleasure machines in heaven. This is <laughs> man, it's, this is just so ridiculous. It's 
but it's it's like this guy is so frustrated, so angry at um at society because he himself uh, does not enjoy these ideas of uh, <laughs> of others being allowed to to live as they wish because he can't live as he wishes because he doesn't have what it takes. I guess I don't know what it is, and now he's ranting about it and 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 wanting to impose a system where nobody will ever be allowed to. Do what they want. It's it's really just like I don't get the whole point of this analogy. Like, like he, he's not against pleasure, but at the same time, because again, that's that's Islamic heaven. Why would it be bad? Like, if a Muslim society decided that you know, like we can have pleasure machines, they're just gonna be Islamic style, so like no alcohol, but you still get all your virgins now. Would that be wrong for them in, in their understanding of pleasure? For, from my Christian background, yes, I'd be opposed to these things because the whole point of Christianity is denying the, the higher things of life, like purpose and meaning and finding virtue and becoming a virtuous person. But it, it's just, I just don't understand the analogy because the more you think about it, what is he attacking? He's attacking the Islamic view of heaven this whole time. Yeah. But it's okay, because in Islamic heaven, you are supposed to have ultimate pleasure only. But in this life, not. In this life, you are supposed to find the the meaning and then go and have eternal pleasure. Then have pleasure forever. Uh, apparently, it's okay if it's uh, in the afterlife, because uh, you're supposed to find um, mean. You're supposed to find the afterlife on here. But it's not okay to have that here in this real world if you are if you apply it in this to this world it's bad if you apply it to the other world that comes after death it's good but that doesn't it, really that, that that doesn't really work daniel because this is what happens when you follow <laughs> balaam's talking ass you just show up <laughs> into these conundrums you can't get yourself out of that's not really so is, is such a thing now bad or not daniel is it not good or is it bad like <laughs> Please decide. Is he almost done with the analogy? Because again, it just it's so no, long. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, I think it, uh, it felt like an eternity. Take access to the pleasure machine. That's a violation of human rights. Every human must have access to the pleasure machine, and only the most evil totalitarian regimes would keep their people under the boot by not letting them entertain every single desire. Despite the new international laws, some rogue nations continue to resist. These nations are portrayed... By the way, uh, it's very funny that this is how he defends his Islamic societies, which want to implement laws like... Um, Forcing everybody to abide by Islamic laws, killing those who leave Islam, uh, killing those uh, who engage in adultery, uh, killing homosexuals... Uh, publicly torturing people who engage in fornication, publicly uh, banning and fighting those people who want to convert Muslims, enslaving other humans. He's like, that, that, is, his, that is his response. Like, so we so should, what we, we are learning from Daniel... Things. If you don't do those things, then you are basically a, a servant of the evil, a strap on pleasure machine. <laughs> <laughs> what, so what we're learning from Daniel is a, is a dystopian world will, will be where authoritarian figures force their will upon you with the promise of pleasure machines islam like <laughs> i don't know anywhere to put this daniel you're basically showing that islam is a dystopia yeah 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 so they should not be allowed to brainwash you into buying the pleasure machine no we should be allowed to instead forcibly remove that pleasure machine and force you to abide by islamic laws entirely and kill you if you resist and torture you and make a public display out of you and enslave you if you if you resist so that we can give you the pleasure machine after you die. yes you know? absolutely that's what it's all about <laughs> just getting that pleasure machine yeah yeah strap it on baby this is absolutely ridiculous, and you sound dumb, idiotic as hell, Daniel. It is terrorists and human rights violators in the media. The news shows images of little children covered in dirt, little girls crying. <laughs> Look at these poor, suffering children. What kind oh of evil God. monsters would prevent these precious darlings from using <laughs> the pleasure machine? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Why does he want to use his strap-on pleasure machine on children? <laughs> Okay, we've heard enough here, didn't you? I think, it, it, all right. We... 
someone better call the FBI. I don't. This I, is getting kind of scary. By the way, um, yes, interesting. But uh, I just noticed what he's referencing here, and it's it's pretty it's pretty. Uh, I don't know how you want it. You would probably call it evil, but what he's referencing here is this. Let's let me see if I have that on here. Uh, can I play this on here? Let me see. Oh, I come. Oh no, that's not it. What was that? There was a clip of of Daniel Kikichu uh, mocking kids in Afghanistan. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, because they were yeah. because they are no longer allowed to go to school. Yes, and and, and they, he they... he mocked that. He mocked those girls playing like, oh, I can't he, go to school. He mocked. Here's the funny thing: is he mocked girls for wanting the higher things in life, education, bettering themselves. They should just be submissive in Islam and get their pleasure machine when they, when they die. That's what Daniel wants. He just wants, he doesn't want anyone to chase the higher, the higher things of life, like education or more, or getting a fulfilling career, for example. No, they need to be submissive, just go through the Islamic motion so that when they die, they get their pleasure machine. That's what he really wants here. Yeah. 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 But so, so this is what's happening here when he says, uh, when he talks about this dystopia where they highlight, uh, you know, sad uh, girls and kids in the in, in that Muslim world that doesn't allow the pleasure machine, he's talking about basically that about how in today's time in Afghanistan girls are banned from going to school, and there are videos out there of girls crying about this because they want mm -hmm. to go to school, and he's making an equation there because he he finds it very stupid that that people feel sad because those girls shouldn't be going to schools they shouldn't go to school they shouldn't be allowed to go to school women should not go to school that's what he thinks women shouldn't be allowed to go to school because if you send women to school then you are basically opening the doors to the decline of humanity of society as we know it and women end up being whores Yes, that's what he believes in. you let your daughters start kindergarten. Next thing you know, they're in first grade, and then they're on OnlyFans. It's one step from kindergarten to OnlyFans, ladies and gentlemen. Do not let girls go to school because Daniel knows what's best. Oh, this is just oh my god. Nation <laughs> dies off due to starvation. That's a price we're willing to pay to make sure the other half of the population gets access to the pleasure machine. And if these terrorists still refuse, okay, we'll just. He keeps going. This is his opening statement. Like, he's got 10 minutes. He's been going for what? Seven minutes at this point? And it's all just pleasure machine this, pleasure machine that. Let me strap this on, baby. Well, I'll tell you how great it is. I don't want to spend time with my grandma. I want my strap on pleasure machine. <laughs> hey, David just noticed that he can leave comments here in the comment section, right in the chat. Okay. <laughs> well, yes, it's about time. Where, where has he been? Freaking amateur hiding in his no internet cave that he lives in or he something? He can't figure out how his internet works, and now he's he's telling us, my internet is down. <laughs> he's missing so many good one-liners he could be using right now. And yeah. he's not he should be all he should be here mocking the pleasure machine, the strap-on <laughs> pleasure machine, and he's there with hiding. Freaking You're hiding, me. boy. <laughs> I mean, oh, I would run, too, if I saw Daniel with a strap-on pleasure machine. <laughs> I, mean, I would, I would want to leave, too. I'd be like, well, I'm getting the hell out of here. I'm ready to go. I need to go talk to a priest, get some holy water, take the, you know, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta repent and just part from being in the presence of this. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're sick. You are sick. <laughs> okay. Did, I like your sound. It's also person. critical that we enforce anti-extremism laws. The opponents of the pleasure machine oh, no. advocate traditional institutions of marriage, family, gender, community, religion. We have to silence these agitators by labeling them as extremist hate mongers that inspire violence. We can put them on watch lists, ban them from travel, maybe even indefinitely detain them on spurious charges. For those who missed it, uh, what Daniel is here depicting as this dramatic uh, system of persecuting these guys who don't want the pleasure system is basically governments being against people like him who want to establish laws to execute people who leave his religion or who are against his religion. That's what he's pointing out here. That's his yeah, big deal. He wants countries to be able to, uh, to to apply the death sentence for leaving Islam, for blaspheming, for being gay, and all of that stuff. And he's like, you, this this evil system, it's persecuting us. We just want to kill other people. <laughs> 
that's really what this boils down to is is his analogy and his twisted brain. He thinks the pleasure machine is liberalism preventing him from murdering gays and sleeping with little girls that they are allowed to marry and then divorce and then remarry, you know, all by the time they start showing signs of puberty. It, I just want to have sex with little kids. Why can't they allow me this? Uh, yeah. And, and, but, but again, as we noted time and time again, his analogy is really Islam because Islamic heaven is the pleasure machine. And so I just, I don't think he really thought this one out. Uh, and it, it's just so off the wall. Like you're sitting here going, why would he make up this weird analogy? Like I thought about it on the plane. I'm like, what was he doing? And like, it dawned on me, like he didn't think it out because it's just Islamic heaven. Like, like I, I cannot even fathom writing an opening statement this cringeworth. I just can't even. He's very proud of it. <laughs> now, we don't want to stifle all debate about the pleasure machine, of course. Oh that might make us look too obviously totalitarian. So let's allow people to debate the pleasure machine, but in a controlled yes, fashion. Yes, Daniel, that's what they are all worried about. They're all worried about looking too totalitarian if they, if, they, if they insist on allowing people to experience pleasure. Yeah, they all think, oh no, if we allow people to experience pleasure, and if we, if we prevent you from banning that pleasure, then we might look too totalitarian. <laughs> yes, too totalitarian, even more totalitarian than you. Would you want to Ooh. massacre and kill people for thinking differently? We he wants, remember, he wants laws against nine year olds having sex. So, nine year olds are going to be round up and thrown in prison, you know, if they start engaging in sort of activity instead of getting them in counseling and therapy and things that would actually help them. No, lock them up uh, immediately. Like, I, and he, it's such projection, honestly, his attack on liberalism. And like, I'm not a liberal. I, I'm a Christian. I, I, there's a lot I disagree with liberalism as, as a whole. I mean, but like, like the, his caricature of it is just like on half the time it just feels like projection. Like his authoritarianism just seeps through, and he just projects that onto liberalism. It, so wait, wait, hold really on, hold weird. on, hold on. Are you are you are you an Islamist? Do you want to establish Islamic laws? Absolutely not. So that means you're a liberal. <laughs> it must be. There's only two options. Either you want child marriage in an Islamic state where gays are thrown off rooftops, or you are a liberal. There's no other option. <laughs> What's also interesting, we didn't even go into this. We're being very fair here. But uh, he talks about secular humanism with Matt and he, uh lengthily. And he basically um, he accuses secular humanism of uh colonizing of slavery of uh of, of wars of uh, imposing laws on other nations and all of that stuff everything that is liberalism everything that is west the, the whole western history uh america everything is secular humanism and daniel, you, you daniel should, uh... do you do you not know the stuff that you're studying do you not know that secular humanism is a very is a specific specific idea that is not that wasn't even around when some of these nations were uh, colonizing continents. You should uh, skip ahead to Matt's. <laughs> the first thing he says after Daniel's opening statement, I think it's like two minutes out, is Dan since Matt actually has a pretty clever response to Daniel's big story of the pleasure machine that just goes <laughs> on and on. Um, I think it's at 26. But the reality is secular humanism is a totalitarian system of liberation and equality <laughs> that has been imposed. This is the dumbest right. thing I've heard about. A totalitarian <laughs> system of liberation and equality. <laughs> we, they, we, they, they oppress us by giving us freedom. <laughs> like, I don't, but how, like, oh. quick, give them, give them freedom of speech and freedom and second amendment rights and <laughs> no, no search and Caesar without a warrant and give them the bill of rights. That's how we'll oppress them. That will show them. They will they're, all they are, they're oppressed Our by their... Human is exactly what secular humanists say to Islam. But the reality is secular humanism is a totalitarian system of liberation and equality that has been imposed <laughs> on the entire world. It's a system... This sounds like a parody. What the hell? Stop secular oppressing humanist. us with... Stop oppressing us with your freedom. I hate it. It's going to ruin everything. Secular humanism is a totalitarian system. They force freedom and equality on everyone. <laughs> what in the world is wrong with you? Like this, did, did you even... He actually wrote that down. He wrote this on paper and he, he, wrote he that looked line it down. over. 
And he was like, yeah, this is great. This is this is good stuff here. I'm going to say this publicly to thousands of people. Like, oh, yeah. Secular humanism is a totalitarian system of uh, liberty and equality. <laughs> That's a brilliant line. Wow, this will shock the masses. And everyone will see that I am, of course, right. Oh, a system he lives in and, and benefits from. It's the, only, he, the only re like, if this is so oppressive, how's he getting up to saying this publicly? Like, attacking all this stuff. If, if he's being oppressed by liberalism, he can get up and say this publicly. Like, by by a debate. Channel, he's being oppressed like, right now. Is this is to tell? He's being oppressed right now, as you can see, man. This is he's, he's denying it. <laughs> he's being persecuted here. He's such an oppressed, oppressed poor little boy. He doesn't want to be free. He doesn't want to be equal. He's being forced to be equal and free. <laughs> Being forced, they're forcing me to be free. It's horrible. <laughs> I don't want to be free. I don't I want, to, want be a, to be equal. I want to be a slave to the Islamic <laughs> State so I can get my pleasure machine after I die. Oh, I don't want to be free. They're forcing me to be free and equal. I hate that. I wish I was a slave. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. I mean, like, system <laughs> that gradually. And I emphasize this gradually destroys basic human institutions like marriage, family, community, religion, and ultimately the human race itself. And whoever resists it is, con is considered a fundamental extremist who must be brought to heel. Islam also <laughs> cares Man. about individual human happiness. But Matt's face just cracks me up this whole time. I <laughs> he can't believe he's actually in this debate. <laughs> he's just looking you know, at the audience like, can I, you believe I got that? a, I got a question for Matt. If you're Matt, when you were sitting there, were you thinking at all, man, I wish I could just debate Christians again. This would, this would be so much better. What if like, this is just, just please let me debate Christians again. I can't deal with this nonsense. <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny. Matt pointed out just uh, half an hour later or so. This will be our, the only debate that we will have. Uh, yes, well. Yeah. He, he he absolutely had enough already. <laughs> Islam also cares about individual human happiness. But Islam sets limits because there are other institutions and norms worth preserving. Institutions of marriage, family, community, religion, and the human race itself. Wow, okay. This wonderful. is why wow. it is far better than secular humanism. Here's, here's Matt's response. Thank you very much for that opening, Daniel. Folks, if you're watching, I want to remind you, DebateCon 4 is coming up this November 4th in Dallas, Texas. You don't want to miss it. Check out the description box for the link for that conference. And if you're from far away across the globe, hit subscribe as we'll be streaming all of those debates live for the public. With that, we're going to jump into open dialogue. Gentlemen, the floor is all yours. I didn't know second you are going to have some totalitarian... What? I thought somebody said something. Totalitarian regime. I need to call my... Uh... Well, I don't actually have stocks, but if I had somebody who's managing my stocks, I'd want to call and put in an order on straw and oil because we are currently out of straw after that straw man and oil after we got pushed down that slippery slope. And what has to be the biggest grandstanding, whining misrepresentation of secular humanism and cancel culture that I've ever heard. Cancel culture, by the way, is the real wine here, but it's not about canceling, it's about accountability. And it seems strange to call secular humanism as Oh, it's just about pleasure and everything else. And if you dare to say something like it's okay to, for to, to forcibly marry a four-year-old, they're just going to call you awful. They're going to say, are you a child predator? It's, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. We don't need to cancel anything. God. We don't need to ban the pleasure machine. The pleasure machine will either kill us off or climate change will or work out ourselves. So since we're supposed to be having a discussion and I have to ask a question to start with, I'll start with my first question. One of the first questions I thought of which uh, I thought of before we ever got here. Is Islam encouraging terrorism or is it just really inept at stopping it? <laughs> wow. wow. So, so again, my question for Matt is, do you wish you could just go back to the good old days where you just had to debate Christians and not deal with a Muslim telling you about his strap-on pleasure machine dystopian nightmare? I just... I just wonder if you've thought about this real hard and think that maybe Christianity ain't that bad. I mean, at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, we can actually have a conversation where we don't have to bring up strap on pleasure machines. Wow. It's, it's, I'm just, I'm kind of surprised that, uh, 
that Matt's response is just okay. This is the dumbest thing I've heard in my life, basically. <laughs> but, but here's a question. Here's a question to you: Does Islam cause terrorism, or can, or can it just not stop terrorism? It's it's but, shocking to me actually that he immediately went there. He was like, okay, you know what? I'm done with this. Let's talk about my, terrorism. My favorite thing is Matt was like, let me just ignore that idiotic opening statement. It was just nonsense, and let's just have some actual conversation. Like he tried. He at least tried. Like let's have a conversation. And, I'm not going to talk about your strap on pleasure machines. Let's talk about something really going on. <laughs> yeah, thanks for talking about the pleasure machine. How about this? Talk about terrorism now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Like, uh, okay, uh, let me respond was... to certain things. Like, if we want to talk about terrorism, okay, the values of secular humanism, like the pursuit of uh, happiness, the pursuit of individual happiness. That was the basis of the French Revolution. That was the basis of the American Revolution. That was the basis what? of... No, it yes, wasn't. Yes, what? the French Revolution was all about secular humanism. Freaking, like, the American Revolution was not all about pleasure. Like, freaking, like, like, has he studied anything on, like, the American Revolution and all the sacrifice these soldiers had to make? Like, they didn't even get pay and they're fighting off the Brit British. Just Don't so lie. Can... It was all about secular humanism. <laughs> it was all about pleasure machines. The king didn't want them to have pleasure machines. Yeah. And the Americans were like, no, no, we want pleasure machines. So we're going to get guns and we're going to sacrifice well, our I, lives. I'm going to get my pleasure machine. And the, <laughs> and the other the others were like, oh, you can't get that. You know, not yeah, like, like the machine. The complexity like, no, I want my there. pleasure machine right now. Give, give me liberty or <laughs> give me pleasure machine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my, this is just so, oh, this guy is retarded. The communist American. revolution, the Decemberist revolution, all of these revolutions that were explicitly on the basis of reason and improving human happiness on the basis Not of reason. reason, religion, that is the ideological basis of all of those movements that ended up killing uh, hundreds of thousands of people. What, did he just mention the Soviets, the, the Bolshevik? Yeah, he, uh, he lumped in the French Revolution, the Soviet Revolution, with the American Revolution, like, yes, which was basically, mean, what the, like, and the American Revolution, like, is, like, was, like, the motivation for that was Christian <laughs> values. I mean, if you check out the book, uh, Human Rights and Christianity, Human Rights and Christianity, an introduction, one of the chapters is on liberty and equality and notes that a lot of the enlightened ideas that inspired the American Revolution came from uh, they came through Calvinistic thinkers. They got this stuff from Calvin and Luther and then earlier Catholic and Orthodox thinkers. So like all of this stuff was not like coming from like secularism. It came from, they were taking ideas they got from Christianity and the Christian history. And then they just exploded in the American revolution and rejecting divine rights of Kings, uh, arguing for property rights and freedom and liberty, these types of things. Like, uh, like his understanding of history, just to, to lump in the American revolution, with the October Revolution of Russia, it's just utter nonsense. Like that would cause an historian to like pull his hair out. Don't you know the the Bolsheviks? They were like they were like, yeah, I want the the Tsar is not given uh, more the pleasure machine. <laughs> we don't want the, the pleasure machine. They are exploiting all of us. We must stand up right now and get the pleasure machine, which they don't want to give. Make our own <laughs> pleasure machine. We want a pleasure machine right now. That's a yeah. that's a that's a pretty good Russian accent, I have to say. I hope so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> of the communist revolution, the Decemberist <laughs> revolution, all of these revolutions that were explicitly on the basis of reason and improving human happiness on the basis. Where is of my pleasure machine, Blit? Give me my pleasure machine. Of reason and overthrowing religion. That is the ideological basis of all of those movements that ended up killing. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people. <laughs> Obviously, you are not going to consider them to be terrorists. That's very convenient for you. Mm -hmm. But the people who are being killed by these groups did consider them to be terrorists. The, the regimes that were displaced by these groups did consider them to be terrorists. But the winners are able to write history. Um, you keep bringing up like uh, this point about four-year-olds. This is like a straw man that was... And we're back where we were earlier. Like, like... Yeah, we, we all know um, Lenin was so, proudly leading... Um, Proudly leading the people, the red ones. So, he ladies and gentlemen, you have a choice watching. before you. You yeah. can be liberal. There's only two choices, according. You got two choices, according to Daniel. You can either a be a liberal and get your pleasure machine eventually, or you can be a Muslim, die, and then get your strap-on pleasure machine. 
Yeah. Which do you want? Do you want the liberal pleasure machine or the strap on pleasure machine that Daniel's talking about? There's only two options here, ladies and gentlemen. Which pleasure <laughs> machine do you want? There's only two options. <laughs> Vladimir Lenin was like, uh, <laughs> was like, we are slowly being turned into Muslims here, but we all want our pleasure machine. Comrades, let us get our pleasure machine right now. Stand up with me. Let us fight for it. And that's exactly also what happened in, in America. That's what happened in France, the, the French Revolution. <laughs> Prominently, everybody knows the French. They they had enough of being uh, being turned into Muslims. They wanted to they had a pleasure machine. They had enough of the Muslim overlords forcing yeah. them to talk to grandma all day. And they were Yeah, yeah. They want a pleasure machine. I want a pleasure machine. Yeah. <laughs> Don't make me talk to my grandma anymore. Oh, pleasure machine. <laughs> How boring my, is your uh, grandma that you're just like, machine revolution! Machine. <laughs> I'm a pleasure machine. I'm a machine of pleasure. I went to my machine of pleasure. That's what they said, and that's how they got the pleasure machine. This is just all. The, thank you, Daniel. Man. This Nobody knew this. I had no idea about this. <laughs> Nate, nowhere did I say that a four-year-old oh, should, should uh, in a sexual All oh, right, all right. Okay, yeah, whatever, man. Yeah, we went through that earlier. Well, we should probably do super chats and close this this out because this is. Oh, but no, wait! I want to see the fight again. Oh yeah, that was. There he goes, going at. Here's on the thing, uh, that, here's the thing right. that Daniel doesn't seem to understand. So, so yeah, yeah, here's the thing. That whenever you get caught on the uh, inconsistency, you make a joke here. or you blast the f word. Whenever you're caught out on an inconsistency, an inconsistency, you just blurt out the f word. You make time. a joke for your plant to laugh at. That's amazing comment. That's an amazing comment. There, there's always a trash the pleasure machine straps you on. <laughs> time, like I have a good there. point that he knows. Whenever you coming, don't have an answer, to talk over you, me. Whenever you don't have an answer, you have to make a I have an joke, answer. If you boomer shut joke. the fuck up, I tell oh, you. Oh, big man, come and say that right here. Come and say it right where? All right. Here. All right. Go ahead. Gentlemen, do it. All right, I'm saying I have an answer. Sit down. Okay, I'll sit down. You said that you come over there and say it. I'm not violent. I would never do anything. You can't respond to any point. You just make Daniel. You are a pathetic weasel, and here everybody can see it. You are a pathetic little person, a little weasel, and everybody can see it right here on display, caught on camera. You like mocking other people. You like making fun of them. You like doing all kinds of dumb things. You are right here on camera being a complete little pathetic weak weasel when you are the one suggesting violence suggesting that if he comes over and says that to your face you will deal with him and he comes over to you and he does say it to your face and you suddenly back down and become that little little boy little man that you are and tell him to just go back and sit down that's what you are that's what you are inside, aren't you? That's you, you want to show the world, you want to show to your Muslim audience that you are a strong, uh, wonderful man. You are a Chad. You are you are tough. You are you are so hard. You are so wonderfully amazing. And people should be scared of you because they are they are weaklings. They are weaklings. They are pussies. You are strong, and there you are backing down immediately as soon as somebody calls yeah. you out on your bluff. He should have. Dan, if I, Dan should have at least stood up. I mean, he just looked, just sitting there. I mean, he suddenly shrunk. Yeah. You shouldn't have. He shouldn't have called Matt over. Like honestly, like this. The there, there was so much in this. You just needed de-escalated. And again, I. It's Daniel is very good at pushing people's buttons, and he pushed Matt's buttons, and Matt justly got upset about a lot of this stuff because. You know, he's up there talking about child marriage and terrorism and all these horrible things. And Daniel just keep pushing his buttons, trying to get these reactions because that's what he wants to use. And this is what Daniel will go on about probably in his review about, oh, he's coming over threatening me. He's an unhinged atheist, you know, and all this stuff. And again, if if anyone debates Daniel in the future, you got to practice the stoic, the stoic mentality. Just like there were parts of my debate where I almost like lashed out hearing some of the stuff he said, but I had to catch myself. Like you can, see, you yeah. see me on stage going like, okay, don't, you know, like trying to calm myself down. Cause I know he's saying horrible things uh, to try to make you go, get up, get, go, get unhinged. And you got, you got to resist that kind of crap because that's what he wants to use against you.
Look, this is a dumb kind of stuff that his fans uh, spread because he started it. Uh, let me see where the mm -hmm. comment. Let me see that there is a comment here. Uh, the hypocrisy of AP is uncanny. Posted by uh, Abu Gharib. Uh, he said, "Wait a minute. What did you say there somewhere?" uh let's get that out i mean i specifically want to highlight this because this is the kind of dumb stuff that his fans and he spread upon his orders you cried in the debate ap and it wasn't in person said he by debate he's referring to that uh four hour or five hour conversation that i had with yeah. daniel kikachu when i invited him on uh where he also told me that we should that we could of course talk about having an actual debate which he immediately dropped yeah. after the debate was over and then started uh saying i spanked this moot at this apostate uh i just want to ask you one question uh Abu Ghraib, can you point me at the exact spot in that debate uh which you call a debate where i actually cried <laughs> can you point me at, at, that, at that specific spot or can you publish it can you publish that part and show where i actually cried like maybe i did cry like maybe i did cry. i i cried i'm a i'm a sensitive person I can get very emotional. I can get upset about things. Uh, I, I might cry here and there. You know, I see some something emotional happening. I see something that is unbearable, and I cry. Maybe I cried there. Maybe it did happen. Maybe I just don't remember it. Can you can you show me in the, that I where I cried in the debate? Oh, you are saying it was afterwards. I cried afterwards. I see. I see afterwards. So you mean afterwards, like later on, or do you mean? The next day, when I actually uh, talked about the debate, and I had an anxiety attack during the live stream, is that what you're talking about? Dude, that's what you mean by crying, because I had an anxiety attack. So that means when I was um, when I had several other anxiety attacks, like when I uh, talked about uh, hating Jews, how Muslims uh, hate Jews all the time. And I had an anxiety attack during that live stream randomly out of nowhere. And I started feeling cold and had to pause. That means I cried there too because I was scared and humiliated and all of that stuff. I see. Mm -hmm. I, I guess when, when people have anxiety attacks, when they have panic attacks, that means they're crying because they are scared of their opponents, even when there is no opponent. Because that's what an anxiety attack is, right? Because you don't understand what an anxiety attack actually, actually mm -hmm. is. And you like to take that kind of stuff out of context in order for your hero to come here and engage in uh, bullying, thinking that you have just humiliated the enemies of this you dumb no. moron. This guy, this guy needs to relax. <laughs> he should probably uh, try Daniel's strap on pleasure machine. It might calm him down a little bit. It might, it might make him feel better and not so, not so, uh, you know, aggravated. It is actually, it is true that I had an anxiety attack when I, the next day when I was uh, sitting down and talking about the debate which uh, was a time where I had a lot of anxiety attacks, where I canceled live streams because I had anxiety attacks, where I had mm -hmm. to get off a plane because I had anxiety attacks, where I told David, I'm sorry, I can't come right now. I'm not feeling very good because I was dealing with some really severe anxiety attacks, which, by the way, have nothing at all to do with uh, being, I don't know, scared in a debate or whatever it is. You can have an anxiety attack from being too happy, from laughing too mm -hmm. much. You can have an anxiety attack from laughing too much if you're dealing with an anxiety disorder. So before you talk about dumb stuff like this and want to act like your, your guy actually defeated and humiliated somebody, because that's the only thing you got, because as everybody can see, you are lacking in logic, you're lacking oh. in dignity, in decency, logic is missing, knowledge is missing, uh, intelligence is missing, your guy is borderline retarded and that's what you resort to because of that did uh so daniel won't have thing. a daniel won't have an official debate with you he just had that conversation yeah he yeah won't, yeah i mean it, it's, it's a little weird because didn't he agree to like a more formal debate at one point he, he said that he would that we, we we would talk about uh having a having an actual debate afterwards mm -hmm. and then I he see. immediately jumped out of that chickened out of that and i well, caught him I live one day and confronted him on his on on the name of Allah versus uh, Yahweh, and he had no idea what he was talking about. It was embarrassing as hell, and I put it out there to show to everybody. And everybody who watches it now laughs at Daniel for being such a, an idiot, such a a person who claims to be so knowledgeable and so 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 superior to his non-Muslim opponents, to the Islamophobes, and then he sits there. 
and he talks about about Allah and about Yahweh and claims that Yahweh was a pagan name adopted mm. from a pagan religion and later claims he never said that because he then realizes that saying that will imply eventually that, that Islam is also a fake pagan religion. Yeah. And... That's how dumb your guy is. Then that's why you have to resort to such personal attacks. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. well, this was interesting to say the least. Just now I'm going to have <laughs> nightmares about Daniel's pleasure strap on pleasure machine. And that's <laughs> not good. And I'm just going to have to try to get those. I need to go to church and clean myself up. This is, oh my goodness, the stuff yeah. coming out of his mouth. It's I need to go it's church. amazing. Like, you know, so again, my question is, is like we should go back to the good old days and just Christians and atheists would debate and have to deal with this kind of crap. Well, then you're basically saying that you want to put on strap on pleasure machines and. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all you atheists and Christians do when you debate. You put on your strap ons and go after each other. And then you pee on the walls. Islam will fix all this. Yeah, strap on pleasure machines. That's what you get, man. That is what you get. <laughs> and here we have it on this. Let's let's watch it again because it was so beautiful. Here's uh, Daniel acting tough and basically suggesting violence, and then backing down like a little kid. Like, okay, okay, okay. Let's forget. Let's let's forget. I never said that. How about sit down? Sit down. Let's talk. Oh, fuck up. I tell oh, you, big man. Come and say that right here. Come and say it right where? All right. Here. All right. Nice. Yes. I'm saying I have an answer. Sit down. Sit down. Okay, I'll sit down. Sit down. You said sit that down. you come over there and say it. Yeah. I'm not violent. I would never do anything. You can't violent. respond to any point. You just make I, a joke. I can't okay. respond to any so point. So you do believe in schooling up. rape. So you believe in would you do you want an answer? Look how he's he lost. This is your guy. This is Daniel Hikikachu. This is I am so glad that, like, my debate with Daniel didn't devolve into this because, like, again, I was just trying to keep it stoic, calm, because I know when Daniel starts pushing people's buttons, this is what happens. And uh, th that's what he thrives on. Look how his face changed immediately after after this. How his face yeah. and his whole demeanor changed. Hey, pretending that I think rape onto any point. You just make I, a joke. I can't okay. respond to any so point. So you do you believe in schooling up. rape. So you believe in... Okay. Would you, do you want to... <laughs> And after this, he started attacking the audience and attacking random people in the audience and uh, trying to yeah. insult them. And that, that's another thing. That's, is he was attacking, that's what you guys are. Fighting with people in the audience. Like, who cares what's going on in the audience? Just focus yeah. on the debate. Like, Daniel I never cares. care what the audience is doing. Daniel cares because his views are so idiotic and his logic is so dumb. And people are mocking him over the stuff that he says already and hating him over the disgusting things that he suggests. Now, the only thing he has left is to attack all those people who are hating him making matters even worse. Maybe you should sit down and think the stuff that I'm arguing here, you know, it's 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 pretty messed up. But no, he, he just continues. He needs to relax with his strap on pleasure machine for like a few <laughs> hours and just sort of calm down. Maybe he'll reset assess everything. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh General said Bulldozer said, does anyone think Islam is Gnostic? I think unknowingly so, maybe. But it's I mean, not he really. has elements that it shares with Gnostic. Yeah, yeah. yeah unknowingly uh yeshua the king said in light of the one unforgivable forgivable sin is rejecting christ a part of that or can god have mercy on someone truly not convinced and grant him the kingdom that's what ip can it's, answer but it's it's important to in light of the one unforgivable so the unforgivable sin is unbelief it's it's rejecting the the witness of the holy spirit that's why it's the unforgivable sin because you reject god if there's nothing you do with a specific act it's more of like a demeanor like you're actively rejecting God continually. Uh, that's that's what Jesus paints it in the light when he, when he mentions it. So in light of the one unforgivable sin is rejecting Christ apart from that, or can God have mercy? Um, so again, it's it, it goes back to my theology that hell is not a place that people are thrown into. It's a place where people go who reject God. Um, it's not a place that people are thrown into against their will. All that are in hell choose it. That's the unforgivable sin. Thank you. By the way, this video is ple uh, is sponsored by Pleasure Inc. Pleasure Inc. Will give you <laughs> <laughs> Great pleasure. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, Ditka, would you have? Okay, I already read that. Thank you. Uh, are you pro educational rape? Asking for Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> Say two plus two equals four. Or it's back to the it's back to the pleasure machine if you don't. <laughs> I couldn't believe what he was saying. I, at first, I thought, wait, wait, did you just say educational rape? Like, 
<laughs> like philosophical <laughs> rape, I don't know, philosophical rape, ep epistemological rape. We can just expand this to all kinds of things. So much. What what is with him? He's talking about strap on pleasure yeah. machines. Everything's rape. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't want to know what goes on in his head. I I know what's going on in his head. It's not nice. Women bachelors are not liked even by criminals. Depends on how you actually bash them. That's uh, some of them are popular. Like uh, I don't know, Andrew Tate, for example. Uh, especially by criminals. Mm -hmm. But yeah, unfortunately. XXWZLX said, uh, remember when he spoke about analytical thinking being a form of <laughs> colonialism. <laughs> Did I get that right? I wasn't really paying attention, but he started talking about how uh, people adopted specific uh, ways of, th is, like the, the law yes. of non-contradiction and things like that as well, because of, I don't know, I, I'm, I don't want to misrepresent it, him now. It was confusing when he, I don't know, I had a hard time following him on that. He did not do a good job presenting his stuff. Like, yeah, it's terrible, terrible, terrible. By the way, Daniel, um, I know you find it very, very, uh, very bad when people talk about you. But I just, I'm just not here. I'm not here to just talk about you. I'm also here to talk to you. Uh, I'm still waiting for you to clarify what exactly you meant by uh, Yahweh uh, was adopted. This pagan name Yahweh was adopted by by those people. But uh, anyway. I would like to get back and have an actual debate with you, um, unless, of course, you are you're, you're scared and uh, and you don't you don't you don't want to have that debate because you don't think it will go well for you. But I'm always here. You can always contact me. You messaged me before several times. You thanked me for making you popular. Uh, you're welcome, by the way. I like it, and I take credit for that every single time when I see you go somewhere. I'm I'm proud that I made you popular. Um, I'm always here to have a debate with you if you want to reach out to me. We can always discuss, uh, is Islam true, for example? Please get back to me, Daniel. Thank you. And again, you're welcome for the whole popularity thing. Uh, let's see. Count Buga said, good prophet AP sent David to the shadow realm. I did. I killed David, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, I got I to gotta take off soon. So okay, okay. Take you off can, you go through these. Yeah. You, can, you can leave. You can leave. Oh, okay. Just kicking me out now. All right. You, you can leave. Get the hell right. out of here. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks for having me on. I will never forgive you for making me go through the pleasure machine dialogue and the monologue that was. And, oh, God. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go repent, read the Bible. Feel okay. Better about myself. Okay. Calm down. Thanks. Stop using the pleasure machine. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate always having you here, IP. And by the way, it, it, IP too, by the way. You're not special. It is, uh, it is always a pleasure to machine to be here. I mean, pleasure to be here. <laughs> as long as you don't strap it on. All right. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks, man. See you. Thanks. See, he got scared and he left. He got scared. You're finished already. Look at me. Look at me. You know you're done. All right, I'll be here. I'm going to read a few more super chats here, uh, and then I will leave. If you want to, wow, there are lots of super chats that I didn't read. Okay, I'm going to read all of these and get, and then, and then I will leave. Um, David, if you're still there, if you're still alive, and if you want to hop on at one point because your internet is suddenly back, you can still hop on and be tortured by me reading super chats. You love this part, I know. I know you do. <clears throat> Um, did you guys see and have thoughts on Daniel's argument from belief in spirit beings? Interesting side of all of this IMO. Um, I only saw him briefly. I jumped into that hole. I, I started listening to the debate at, I don't know, one hour and 30 minutes or something like that. And he was explaining how believing in God is uh, intuitional. You don't need evidence. You don't need arguments. But it's it's they, you, we all have the the intuition. We all have this drive to believe. Therefore, we should believe or something. It was just the the worst attempt at having a discussion about the existence of God or the supernatural. Why would you even agree to have such a debate if you can't <laughs> if you can't have proper arguments? It's, it's so ridiculous. And people, there are lots of people who have had great debates on this stuff. You're not one of them. Uh, Jordan has bulldozer said, hey, Mike, did you ever listen to James Lindsay? Uh, I can answer for him. I can say no. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. But I'm pretty sure he did not. It's because I know him. Um, 
Franklin Garcia said, "Hey, this is a little bit off topic, but IP. What are some sources? See, I should all. I should. I will send this to him again. Maybe he can uh, answer all of this on his Twitter profile. Um, I'll send. I, I'll text him now. Sure, this Cap Teeth said, "Would you have Robert Price on your show for me? Robert Price. Robert Price. Isn't that the guy who was a guest on um, on Derek's show quite a bit? Is that who we're talking about?" Robert M. Price. Is that who, I don't I don't know. Um never thought about it. Not sure. I don't know. Tyson 277. I don't know anything about him. Tyson 277 said it's haram to give the wife some tongue action, but beating her and kids having sex with kids uh, or old men is halal. Yeah, but don't say the F word. That's where we draw the line. Don't say the F word. Have sex with I, I don't even want to speak it out. <laughs> Uh, Muhammad is in the book of Genesis, bros. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> this is just so messed up. Jamnik said, I agree with AP that Daniel is not that stupid. He's using debate tactics equivalent to dirty boxing in pursuit of a win. Daniel is a skilled troll. I know, I still, I still feel like, I still feel like he might be like an undercover plant to make Islam look bad, and he's paid for that by some, by some strong people who don't like Islam. You know, maybe that's maybe that's what's happening here. I'm not sure. It could be. It is entirely possible. If so, I must say, Daniel, you are very competent. You're doing a fantastic job. Fantastic job. Continue, and I hope you're getting good money for this. Royal Castro is in loud noises. Uh, Jordan's bulldozer said Daniel is not welcome in Ancapistan anymore. What's the relation with Ancap and Daniel? I don't know. <laughs> Nickel Sanger said, I would have asked Daniel if you think child marriage is so good for society. Why are you married to an adult? Because he can't. He wants to marry little kids. But the evil, secular, humanist, totalitarian system will not allow him to marry little kids. That's the problem. Break the cross. Made a super chat and said, break the cross. It's very disrespectful. Nikhil Sanka said, to IP, how much did Israel pay you to convert to Christianity and talk shit about Islam like a covert agent? I have to ask him that. I don't know how much he's paid. He might let me know or not. I will see. Uh, Daniel thinks Allah will give him a pleasure machine in Jannah. <laughs> it's just the absurdest part of this whole thing that he kept ranting about this dumb pleasure machine. Like, doesn't he realize how stupid that was? Obviously, he doesn't. Jordan's bulldozer said Daniel confuses liberalism with neo Marxism. You can't get anything right, man. Tanzil Muslim said, AP, could you explain what uh, Marijn van Buten said about Allah's name? Also, did Mopus have mental issues? Um, Mopus, you mean Mohammed? Uh, he did definitely, and I, I wrote a big thread about that at one point. It wasn't that big, but I wrote kind of an article on that too, which I never published. I still need to get, get back to that kind of stuff. Uh, Marijn van Putin said about Allah's name. I can't remember what it is. I brought this up yesterday, but I can't exactly remember what our discussion was. But it was about um, whether Allah is a proper name in Islam or not. I can't exactly remember. I'm sorry. Tyson said, I was going to say he's a funny, weird little man with a weird hat, but no, he's just Muslim. That's very disrespectful. Very disrespectful. He's a tough guy. Daniel Kikichu is a tough guy. He's a big man. He's strong. He's You don't mess with Daniel Kikichu. You don't mess with this guy. I have an answer. You have to make a I dumb have joke. an answer. A if you shut joke. the fuck up, I tell oh, you. Oh, big man, come and say that right here. Come and say it right where? All right. Here. All right. Guys. Yes. Oh, relax. 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 I'm not violent. Go ahead. Okay, go, go sit down. Go sit down. All right. I'm saying I have an answer. Sit down. Go sit down. Sit down. You said that you come over there and say it. I'm not violent. I would never do anything. He's a big man. Big man. Big strong man. Everybody's scared of him. <laughs> Can you imagine like I'm having a discussion with somebody and after being very nasty to that person, that person says, You shut the fuck up. And I'm like, How about you come here and say that right here? How about you come and say that right here? And that person comes, I'm like, Yeah, okay, go sit down. Go sit down.
I just muted myself, didn't I? How did I do that? <laughs> I don't know. I hit something. I muted myself. Anyway, I was saying big mouth. That's all he has. Nothing else. Y'all should check out the war metal band, Damar. I don't know. But do I have to be hold to that whole bit again because I was muted during the whole bit? I'm not going to do that again. Uh, is it a full auto police machine, pleasure machine, or a bolt action? <laughs> Daniel has to specify. He didn't. He didn't do a good job presenting any of that kind of stuff. He didn't do any of that kind of stuff. He needs to write down what exactly how exactly this pleasure machine works. Donald Trump's 116 indictments uh, became member of the channel. Thank you so much, Donald Trump's 116 indictments. I appreciate it very, 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 very much. What sound is weird? Why does it sound weird? What are you talking about? Oh, no. Did it switch to a different microphone because it, 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 it couldn't catch? Yes, it did. What the hell is happening? Okay. <laughs> I pulled the cable. Now it should be back to normal. Is it back to normal? Is it back to normal? Back to normal? Yeah. Okay. I was trying to mock Daniel the Kikachu, but then I lost, stepped in and unplugged my cable. But now it's back to normal again. Okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. Terrible, terrible job here. <clears throat> Bolahan Animas, Animas Haun said, great job. Please, can you do content on Arab slave trade? Maybe it would help those black people defending Islam. I made videos. I made two different videos long in the distant past, which you can find on my channel, um, which are titled The Dark History of Slavery in Islam or something like that. And something else, but I made two videos on slavery. One is about um, one is about what slavery, what Islam says about slavery, and the other is on the history of slavery and how it was implemented. Oh, I also made another one, which is um, which is Muhammad was a slave master or something like that, which uh, talks about Muhammad's slaves and how Muslims throughout history um, never stopped having slaves because uh, until until the evil 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 western liberals stepped in and stopped it terrible terrible people uh gordon's bulldozer said uh gore noise bulldozer said do muslims think that jews and christians won't fight back have they literally never heard of israeli commandos and or rednecks no no if if christians and jews fight back then they are being uh evil oppressors motivated by liberalism uh, you should never fight back. Atheists should never stand up and say, okay, here I am. What What do you want me to do? No. That if you do that, that basically means you are uh, influenced by liberalism and you are following and taking the pleasure machine. What you're supposed to do is become a Muslim or just take it or become a slave. I just read that, didn't I? We are so cooked, <laughs> said Enamil Butelzi. Uh, Igor Kovanovsky said, love you, AP. Keep exposing this call. Thank you so much. I really, truly appreciate that. Thank you for being here. When you're so bad that you make an atheist look... I know, atheists are horrible people. <laughs> it would be funny if I get... If I got... Uh, <laughs> if I got community striked for that. I'm an atheist. I'm joking. Moderator, whoever is picking this up, I'm joking. I, I'm an atheist myself. I'm a horrible person too because atheists are horrible people. Uh, Muhammad had a pleasure machine called the Al Kalbi. Don't get back to that again and again. <laughs> and Emil said, Can Mike Jones explain his tattoo lore? I will tell him to do that on his channel. Maybe he can publish a video where he can take his shirt off and display all his tattoos and play some music. And talk about the pleasure machines, something like that. I don't know. <clears throat> WLZXX said, didn't Daniel deny that Moses existed in the debate? Did he? I'm not entirely sure. I didn't watch the whole debate. I tuned in somewhere at one hour and 30 minutes or something like that and watched the rest from there on. And although I might have missed a part here and there, that he talked Moses was mentioned before that. I don't know. Let me see. 
historical knowledge and founded Zoroastrianism. He claimed to have founders who lived in the distant past and had access to supernatural knowledge. For example, Zoroaster had access to supernatural knowledge and founded Zoroastrianism. Similarly, Moses founded Judaism, Buddha founded Buddhism, Muhammad وسلم, founded Islam, and so on. Religions further claim that they've preserved the teachings of their founders without fundamental alteration. So he is just saying that uh, these things are being claimed, and some of them are true according to him, some of them probably are not i don't know did he did he say anything about moses not existing i don't i don't i don't know anything about that uh moses where, where else is he mentioned Zoroastrian doctrines like the trinity cannot be traced back to jesus similarly when it comes to figures like zoroaster moses and perhaps even buddha it cannot be independently verified that these figures have ever even existed as a result basic zoroastrian jewish and buddhist texts or doctrines cannot be traced to these founders but islam is unique in that it's okay so he says that um unless he said something more about this and you mean that but no i mean he's he's saying that it can't be verified that they existed but he himself obviously believes that that Moses, for example, did exist. So he's not making a, a claim of Moses not existing here. But he is basically, yeah, saying that um, that in the other religions cannot properly verify what they believe in. That said, that does not mean that Moses didn't exist. Not sure what the context of all of this is. I didn't catch that. So Rastra and Moses, uh, Moses and we have in the Torah. Okay, here, let's see. Doctrines and practices. And th they will not be able to historically verify that the Torah is actually traced to, you know, the time of Moses as a historical figure. There's actually no archaeological evidence or radiocarbon evidence, manuscript evidence that Moses even existed. As Muslims, we believe that Moses existed as a prophet, and he's one of the most frequently mentioned prophets in the Quran. But we believe in the existence of Moses because of the Quran, because we believe in the Quran, we accept revelation. Yeah, but so, with Muhammad yeah, he believes in the existence. So no denying that. Can't, can't argue with that interesting stuff though afk prince said i am from afghanistan and your vids helped me to leave islam i'm very happy to hear that very very happy to hear that enjoy the pleasure machine <laughs> during the rest of your life that's apparently what we all do that's what we all do we're sitting there you're sitting there watching netflix <laughs> kyle whittington said daniel is doing very important work as a christian i once thought that i should take islam seriously daniel helped show me that that is not the case. Islam, yeah. Daniel, thank you so much. You're doing a fantastic job. Let me see if I can have if I have some sounds for that. Uh hmm. What is this? What? That's not one. Here. Yeah. What kind of Muslim are you? <laughs> Homosexuality should be fine. I still have a bunch of Muhammad hijab sounds because I didn't take the time to work on these sounds and put different stuff on here. Yeah, man. But all I did was go through my video, the end of Muhammad Hijab, and then pick out whatever sounds I put in there, plus a few from around like what this. What the hell? I mean, <sighs> and this. I'm a medical doctor. And I have a laugh here from a movie, <laughs> which is from the movie um, Inglorious Bastards. Yeah. Anyway uh yeah ditka said robert price has great theories on the origin of islam really i thought he only talks about christianity and stuff like that i do not know i do not know i do not know uh <laughs> sitting there watching netflix code is good opposite hey james uh good seeing you here by the way yeah i know i know i like this i saw i i remembered this quote and i thought okay i have to have that as a sound you're sitting there watching netflix <laughs> You're sitting there watching Netflix. Such a dumb thing to say, but it's kind of funny when you put it in, when you take it out of context. Um, just because someone is articulate doesn't mean he isn't stupid. There are plenty of mentally disabled people who are completely functional. I, I know, but, um, you know, Daniel Hikikachu claims to have gone to some really high class, um, some, re some really respectable universities and has studied um, physics. 
and psychology. Um, physics and philosophy, not psychology. That's me, not him. Um, I, I don't I don't know. Like, can somebody who is who is who is that bad at thinking really go to Harvard to study physics? Can somebody who is that bad at thinking go to uh, Tufts University and study philosophy? I, I don't know. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> it really doesn't make sense to me. It, it's like he's either um, an intelligent person who is so restricted in thinking when it comes to these topics because of his because of how Islam restricts his mind, or he's just being deliberately stupid and deceptive or he's somehow really that dumb and somehow made it through this whole system i i don't get it it's, i don't know we will never know we will never know it, because it's, it's unbelievable to me that somebody would actually not understand the logic of some of, of that for example Oh, you are so you don't want to punish uh, kids who want to engage in uh, relationships and sexual relationships. That means that means you are for nine-year-old kids having sex with each other. That's a that's so idiotically that's so dumb. And I don't think you can be that dumb. <laughs> it, I think you can be that dumb. I don't think you can be, you can. You can go to these universities and be that dumb. I just, I don't know. Maybe I'm completely wrong on this. Maybe you can. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> doing MDMA churns your serotonin and then you get depressed. A pleasure machine probably wouldn't even work. It's not a realistic thought experiment. <laughs> Are you saying Daniel Kikic's thought experiment is not realistic? Shame on you. Shame. Shame on you. Shame on you. Uh, Grace again said he thinks the Moses in the Quran exists. Yeah, he thinks uh, Mo Moses existed according to the Quran. The Moses we have in the Quran existed because we believe that the Quran is absolutely true. And if the Quran says that Moses was around and he did a few things, then we believe that that is indeed true. But we cannot verify historically or by other means that Moses existed. We believe in the existence of Moses not because of uh, secondary sources and factors. We believe in it because the Quran says he existed. That's his whole point there. Yeah. Mosh Cohen from Israel. Uh, thank you so much. Well, I was I was worried. Thank you. I'm getting my my Jewish money here. Uh, sent me some shekels here and said Daniel living and preaching this in the U.S. reminds me of the Israeli Arabs in our parliament inciting their youth while taking taxes from the evil. Yeah, 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 yeah. But hey, thank you so much. I appreciate. It. I was I was I thought I thought I'm not going to get my Mossad money here, and I'm doing this for nothing. But thank you. I appreciate it, Mosh. Uh, Ditka said, have on Robert Price for me, please. I don't know. The last time I heard of that guy, he was, uh, he was, he was on Derek Myth Vision's show and he did, he said some really, really messed up things. And that's all I know about him. Like he was talking about the protests during the whole Black Lives Matter uh, protests and he was basically talking about how um, what should be done is to go out and shoot <laughs> shoot the people or something like that. I don't know. I, I don't precisely remember what exactly he said but he said some really messed up stuff is all I know about him. But yeah, I don't know. I do not know. Uh, Abu Gharib is still here trying to find people who sympathize with his love for Islamic jihad and terrorism. Unfortunately, you can't find anybody. I wish you good luck, Abu Gharib. Islam also says Jesus is not God nor the Son of God. Wow, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's why we don't believe it. That's why, yeah, it's, it's because because Islam says we don't. Islam says that's true that's why we say it's true islam says it's not true that's why we say it's not true islam for example says jews say that ezra is the son of god 
And that's why, of course, we don't believe that Ezra is the son of God. That's why we reject Jews, because Jews say Ezra is the son of God. Yeah, Of course, that's how dumb the Quran is. <laughs> All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Have a fantastic uh, day. Um, I will be back soon. David never came back. And stuff. What is this question? What is this question? Deborah Irene said, AP, you're always too nice when it comes to their blatant lying and filthy text. What's up with that? I don't know. Sometimes I ask myself the same thing. Let me make a poll here and ask if I'm too nice. <laughs> Maybe I can change everything from now on. Is AP too nice? Question, yes or no? I will run this poll for a minute and see what everybody says. <clears throat> if if you guys say I'm too nice, then I will start being horrible to everyone. Am I being too nice? Maybe I could be nicer. Look, people are fighting. Is AP too nice? There's a fight going on right now. This is happening in life. This is happening right now, right here. You're experiencing you're witnessing history. You're witnessing history here. Let's put this on the screen and follow it right here. Let's see. The poll should stay open here. This is, these are very critical moments in this big fight that is going on. 61% is saying yes so far. 30 nine percent is saying no 38 no 62 yes right now there is a big fight going on 61 percent says yes the rest says no 62 percent says yes the rest says no so far 111 people have voted we, we, we are waiting for more votes the question is is ap2 nice yes or no if we can have more votes here uh this will be a historic moment a historic outcome this outcome here uh, will determine the rest of history on this channel. If you vote yes, then I will start being a horrible person to everybody here. Uh, if you say no, then... Okay, it's obvious. The result is... I'm ending it now. Those who voted already voted. And we have the results. The results are in... Where did the poll go? Okay, here. The results are... Is AP too nice? The results are... Yes, 61%. No, 38%. 136 people voted. Uh, apparently, 60% of, of the comments of the live chat here says I'm too nice. And what am I going to do with this, with this piece of information? Well, what do you do with any piece of information? You just register it and then you move on. You don't care about it. Thank you for playing the game with me, though. <laughs> Sorry for having fun about this. But yeah, that's just what I am. I'm just too nice. I'm too nice. I could say horrible things on here, but why would I? Everybody is uh everybody is, is very is very is very mean. I'm just I'm just a nice person. <clears throat> Sunrise in Paris Paradise said I demand a recount. Uh bring it to the Supreme Court. Otherwise I don't care. <clears throat> uh, you need to hurl more, ra hurl more racial slurs. Maybe I can start doing that. I don't know. I'll see. Um, will I be turned to angels or prophet Yabudi? That's shaky booty. Um, play Red Dead. Isn't that the? Isn't that a picture of Red Dead Redemption One, not Two? Now all of those people who don't play video games will escape here yeah i think that's that's one that's funny <clears throat> i should start playing games on my live streams and have eight hour live streams every day okay i'm talking i just keep talking i'm leaving now thanks everybody have a fantastic day You're sitting there watching netflix i'm gonna leave have a good day have a fantastic day and quiet man as always Brother, I have felt... stay away from homosexuality should be fine <laughs> Homosexuality should be fine. Why did I put that on here? <laughs> uh, oh boy. <laughs> Have a fantastic day. Yeah, man. And anyway, uh, <laughs> the, 
You're right. You're right, Sunrise and Paradise. This is the pleasure machine here. You're finished already. Look at me. Look at me. You know you're done. <laughs> lose faith. I tell you, lose faith. It's better for you. Imbecile. Get the hell out of here. Liar. You're a liar. You're a liar. What? Liar. You're a liar. <laughs> I'm omitting your dog. You're sick. You're sick. I can play all of these at once. I can play them at the same time. That is crazy, man. Wait a minute. What? You're, you're sick. finished already. You're, you're sick. sick. You're, 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 you're a liar. You're sick. You're a liar. I'm a medical doctor. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Okay. All right. I'm having too much fun here. Uh, have a fantastic day, everybody. <laughs> and stay away from. Oh, no. I can't say that. This other guy is supposed to say that. Wait. This other guy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Sergeant. I'm sorry, Sergeant. I'm still in the show here. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining the stream. See you next time. And stay away from Islam. Stay away from Islam.